Welcome everybody to the June 6, 2023 Board of Commissioners meeting. Please silence your cell phones, pages, and other electronic communication devices. Agendas and speaker request forms are located at the back of the chambers. And uh, the commission now utilizes speaker request forms. If you'd like to speak on an item, please complete the speaker request form located in the bookshelf in the back of the chambers and return it to the commission manager, Holly Hennies, located at the lower right side of the dais. At this time, we'll do, I'll call the meeting to order and I'll request Ms. Uh, Deb Hadcock to do the moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, Ms. Hancock. Uh, next on our agenda is review and approval of the agenda. Is there any additions or changes? Seeing moved, none. Moved to approve. Second. Moved by Roskinek, second by Hancock to approve the agenda. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, that brings us up to the consent agenda, and I'll recognize Ms. Holly Hennies. Good morning, Commissioners. For public notice, the Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine items. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Board. Items may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Board member or a citizen. Today's consent agenda contains the following items. Approval of the minutes from the regular meeting of May 16th, 2023. Number six is to approve the order for organization and incorporation for the Cliff View Lane Road District. Number seven is to approve the renewal of the retail on off sale malt beverage and South Dakota farm wine licenses for Black Elk Resort LLC under the Black Elk Resort LLC, O'Malley's Casino under TNH LLC, and Sugar Shack under Trevor Kotzman, and further move to release the licenses upon the payment of appropriate property taxes. Number eight is to reappoint Mr. Charles Johnson and Mr. Michael Lewis to the Planning Commission for a term of three years, effective July 1st, 2023. Number nine is to acknowledge the notice of intent to conduct a raffle for the Baseball Parents, Inc. doing business as Post-22 Baseball. Number 10 is to acknowledge the notice of intent to conduct a raffle from the Silver City Volunteer Fire Department. Number 11, to acknowledge the notice of intent to conduct a raffle for the Chapel, Rochford Chapel. Number 12, to acknowledge the notice of intent to conduct a bingo for the Rochford Community Hall. Number 13, to approve the South Dakota Department of Transportation Railroad Joint Powers Agreement for Weed Spring Services. And finally, number 14 is to authorize the purchase of two Dodge Chargers from the state contract number 17620 from Wagner Auto and Pier for a total purchase price of $70,194 submitted by the Sheriff's Office. Thank you, Holly. At this time, is there any members of the public who wish to remove any items from the consent agenda? See none at this time. Is there any commissioners who'd like to have any removed from the number eight, Mr. Chair? Okay, number eight. Any others? I'd look up for a motion to approve the consent agenda, all except for item number eight. So moved. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Roskinick to approve items five through 14, with the exception of eight on the consent agenda. All any comment? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So the reason I pulled number eight is because I see Michael and Charles around the audience. And I want to take this time to say thank you for your last three years of service because there's a lot of work in that planning commission. If you do it right, it, it's very time consuming. And I know you both live in the Hill City area. You have to travel. So I just want to say thank you. And I'm glad that you're uh, re-upping for the next three years. Thank you, Mr. Oskinek. I would, Deb, would you like to say anything? Thank you. Okay. I agree with Ron. I'd like to also thank you guys for the work that you do. You know, with the rotating with the commissioners on the planning commission, it's it's helpful and we see how it's running. And I think you both do exceptional jobs. And Charlie, uh, you know, I just want to take this moment, you know, 
you were dealing with some tough issues this last couple of months or this last year as chairman of the planning commission and, and you've taken a lot of heat, but I think you run a structured and productive meeting. And some people may not always agree with that, but I think you, you've done a good job. And I wanted to really express that today since you're redoing that up. So thank you guys both for your service. Thanks guys. With that, I'd look for a motion for... Uh, move to approve number eight. Thank you. Moved by Ross next, second by Ms. Hadcock. Did you guys want to say anything? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't give you the opportunity. All right. So we have a motion for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indic indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, guys. That brings us to item number 15, which is uh, items from the auditor, and I'll recognize Cindy Moore. Good morning, Commissioner. Cindy Moeller, Pennington County Auditor. I just about forgot to come down. <laughs> Listening to the phone room. First one that we have before you is the renewal of the um, Mount Beverage and South Dakota Farm License for Firehouse Campground. We would ask for approval of that renewal. So moved. Second. Have a motion for approval and a second to approve the retail on off sale malt beverage and South Dakota Farm and Wine license for the Firehouse Campground under Fat Boys Inc. and for the Horse Thief Campground under MOS a AMS LLC. Is there any public comment? Any further from the commission? Are you good with both of those, motion maker? Sure. That was. That, that was your intent, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Works for me. And you're okay? Okay. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Cindy. <clears throat> Next, that brings us to items number 16, items from buildings and grounds, uh, construction projects. I'll recognize Kevin Burton. Give me a second. <clears throat> Hopefully I can speak clearer now. <laughs> morning, commissioners. Um, this morning um, we have before you the courthouse third floor build out um, bids that we ever received. Um, when we asked for authorization to bid, we um, said we'd come back with our final uh, results and ask for approval. So that's what we're here for today. We only received one bid, but it was within the um, confines of the, the estimates that we had had. Um, this is for the build out of the third floor of the courthouse for a conference room for the judges. Um, so forth and so on right now the only way that they can do video conferencing is in a adjacent courtroom if it happens to be vacant so this is a need for the seventh circuit um, up there um, the construction amount total that we got was three hundred twenty thousand um, dollars for that project um, so asking for board approval on that thanks kevin and this is was on the buildings and building committee's priority list? It, it was, was, yes. It was. Yes, okay. from uh, 2022. Okay. Is there any questions from Kevin from the commission? Mr. Chair. Mr. Rossman. So, Kevin, roughly how many square feet is that going to uh, add to the courthouse then? I'm just curious how much more room they're going to get uh, with this build up. I believe that space is about 1,200 square feet. Okay. That's quite a bit, actually. That seems about right. I think rough guess there. But this is something that's not going to change with us moving to 900 concourse. This is something that's going to... It fits into the long-term plan yeah, that long -term. we have from the needs assessment. Um, the the um, second floor vacated space or shelled in space there, that's still up for question as to who's going to move into there or how that space could be allocated. 
but the third floor, this makes perfect sense for a conference room up there and shouldn't change uh, with anything that we've got planned in the needs assessment. One other question. When, when we built that out, we had an expansion joint that was continuously leaking when we, we built that new entrance way and, and this was supposed to help alleviate that. I, I just wanted to make that that point when, we, when then that original build out was and then we added the space up there so, and left it unfinished at that time. But the original reason why that was is for room for the entrance for security, but also helped with the expansion joint, if I remember right. Uh, Mike Cool, Director of Billings Ground. That is correct, uh, Commissioner. Uh, one, of, one of the the objectives from the uh, courthouse, uh, the entrance addition, was to make more space uh, in regard to a. Uh, for security as well as ADA tr transitions, yeah. uh, push that out. Uh, building it out also helped us resolve the issues that we had with uh, maintaining sealed joints for covered space uh, over that plaza, the plaza that existed there. So yeah. that problem was solved. With <coughs> I just wanted to bring that up, Mike, because that that fixed the problem that we had the expansion joint, but also because we were getting some deterioration in, in the underground from that, yep. which I think next on our agenda is some asbestos remover. This is all part of the projects that we're moving forward to keep our courthouse up and and, yes. and it's not. Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. So this is in the budget, the 320 uh, buildings and grounds that we are using, not any of the other funds for. Related building funds. Human, yep. Mr. Chair, I'll go ahead and move toward the bid. Deb, Deb wasn't done yet. So how much do we have left in that fund this year, or do you have it all um, used up for other projects? No, there's a um, couple of million dollars in that fund currently. Thank you. I appreciate that. Just making sure we have the funding um, to do that and all the projects we want to do for moving forward in the future on the bigger projects as well. So. Yeah, you guys that's, need, that's a rough number. Well, you guys need money in there to do repairs like this that are existing um, besides just the other buildings. So I just wanted to make sure that we had, and we're keeping that funding in there and not using it for, um, we're using it for the existing buildings that need repairs, not the, the new buildings. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead and move to award the bid for the courthouse third floor building project as designed by Co-op Architecture to sequel construction in the amount of 320,000 and authorize the chair's signature to an AIA construction contract when ready. Thank you. I have a motion by Rosknecht, seconded by Hadcock to approve. Is there any public comment? See none, any further discussion from the commission? See none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Um, Next, well, you just will stay up there. Next is our uh, BKV facilities needs assessment update on the presentation. So I forgot to introduce myself for the record last time, so I'll do it now. Uh, Kevin Burton, Senior Construction Project Manager uh, with Buildings and Grounds. Um, so a, a couple of months ago, we presented the 2022 um, Building Committee recommendations for projects, um, the last project was one of those. Um, at that meeting, um, it was asked that we bring forth some more information on the capital projects and the facility needs assessment that we've been planning in that budget process. So we've invited BKV here today to come back and update what they had done over the last couple of years on that needs assessment. Last time they presented was September of last year. Yeah. Um, we've purchased 900 <coughs> course and some other directions that we've been talking about. So I feel it's very important for them to be able to update you guys and be able to show some of the more recent numbers that we've got out there. Well, thank you, Mike. And thank you guys for coming here and refreshing us because uh, a lot's happened in the last seven, eight months. So. A good refreshers is good for us. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Good to see you all. I'm Bruce Schwartzman with BKB Group, and I have Henry Pittner with us as well. So what we'll do is try to go through some of the information briefly. Uh, it's, some of it's just a refresh of what we did 
discuss in September, but we want to make sure we address any questions you all have as well. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Um, so on, on our agenda today, and we're going to go probably, you know, 20 minutes uh, with, the, with the presentation, uh, just kind of a recap of uh, some of the data and projections uh, uh, regarding population and jail, uh, specific numbers. Uh, the space program, uh, as, as uh, more work is being done on the, the 900, there's a little bit of an update there on those. Then uh, kind of going through where we were in September with the options, um, what has changed since then, and what the recommendation uh, is at this point. Um, you know, the, the, the cool thing about master plans is um, it's a living document, so it's the, it's important to be able to continue on and, and, and help make other decisions as new things come up. So that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, so appreciate that opportunity. So as you recall from the, uh, the population projections, uh, lots and lots of growth projected. Uh, you're very popular uh, here. Uh, plus the, uh, with uh, the Ellsworth uh, Air Force Base, uh, the impact on that, uh, the growth, we're expecting somewhere between 23 and 30% uh, growth over the next 20 years, which is, is significant. Um, with that, uh, there's a, um, a correlation then to the population of the jail. Uh, this, uh, the, what we're showing up there really is a couple of things. So at the very top red line, at, at right around 600 there, is your total bed capacity. That's uh, kind of un, unrestrained without any classification and all that. When you start doing classification separations, your operational capacity is at five. 25. So as you see the, the, the green line and, and the red line, uh, we're always in that range except for the, uh, the COVID years where it went down a little bit. But you can see uh, it's, it's on its way up and uh, continues to grow. Um, so that's a, um, it's a big, big issue overall. <coughs> uh, it, it not only is capacity of the jail, but it's also the uh, admissions are growing uh, again by 33 to 50 percent is what we're projecting overall. So it's just a lot of a lot of throughput. So there is, you know, that part we had covered uh, also you know, previously. So that that's still part of the master plan ideas and getting that uh, moving ahead. And then uh, when the average length of stay uh, is continuing to be pretty steady around uh, 13 to 15 days on, on average which means some with the more complex uh, um, things going on in the courts, that average length of stay varies and starts getting to the higher point as people that have lesser offenses get released uh, quicker uh, as it comes through there. So what it illustrates is somewhere uh, at the end of the day, you need somewhere between 900 and 1,200 beds as we go forward for the, for the next 20 years. So really hard to predict, but it's we, we see the wave uh, coming for you. Program-wise, uh, it's pretty darn close. We're we're within uh, from where we were uh, in September. It's uh, it's increased about a half a percent, um, and some of it's due to staffing. Uh, some of it is uh, just additional spaces now that the the you know, the, uh, the TSB architects are involved in, in kind of working through uh, the initial pieces. So everything that has an asterisk on it has changed uh, just a little bit. Uh, actually, one of them went down a little bit too. So there, there's some variance as that comes through. But consistently, uh, what we're projecting for the future uh, is is happening. So uh, um, which you know, space is related directly to the people uh, that are in it. And um, that those numbers haven't changed from when we showed those to you. Um, you know, the idea is right now, uh, currently you're compressed. So, um, and then when you get to a standard that everybody has, you know, the right size office instead of being in a closet or other locations, right? Uh, uh, then, then what happens as you continue from that point on, um, because the, the amount of people changes, but the spaces don't necessarily change at the same rate. The, uh, the, the uh, person, the, the averages are different. Uh, they kind of go down at that point. So it shows kind of an up to, to the average and then back down to where, uh, you know, it is with appropriate space. So that's inclusive of the jail too. 
Um, <laughs> and then uh, looking at then all the space, uh, except for the jail, um, we're somewhere in the uh, uh, 21, uh, you know, we're, we're in the next 20 years, we need about another 19% uh, of those spaces. When you look at the jail, uh, there's a current need of about 200 spaces that's required. Uh, just to keep up to where we are right now, that number has hasn't changed, and um, it's it's probably if, if anything, it's it's going to continue to grow uh, pretty quick at that point. So, um, so it's all pretty consistent from where we were in September uh, overall. <laughs> so, with that, uh, in September we um, presented this um, uh, recommended concept of of uh, with the idea really being. Uh, utilize the downtown as kind of a justice center. Um, at that point, we were also talking about um, two things being remote. One, one ended up being the 900 concourse, which was uh, uh, looks like a pretty good investment at this point uh, with the way the costs continue to move up. The other thought was taking the jail off-site and perhaps doing a similar thing and, and getting a big box building or something and then getting additional capacity out there and trying to get the economics of that working. Um, so that um, things have changed, uh, uh, particularly on the jail side uh, with that. So the uh, the 900 uh, concourse is, is underway. Uh, TSP is uh, starting the architecture uh, work for that, uh, which is great, which will move people out of this building. Um, uh, and then uh, that'll allow this building to become the new public safety uh, center. And uh, then the dominoes continue to fall uh, with that. When, one of the uh, unresolved things of our previous um, recommended concept was, where do you have additional space for swing space as you're moving? Uh, people, you know, literally, you know, if you take like the um, public defender, for example, we, we had talked about perhaps using the parking uh, uh, group deck and uh, the sheriff's parking there and converting that into space. And so as we were looking at other options, seeing how well the 900 concourse uh, project is economically beneficial to, to get the most we can out of this, uh, our, our thoughts again are, you know, is there a property we can purchase that we could uh, provide those kind of spaces, A, for swing space? So as we uh, move people out of this building, and we still have uh, the public defender and the state's attorney would need to have a temporary home as we finish the remodeling here and then move uh, the state's attorney to the old public safety building. Um, so uh, that's part of our thought process again. Uh, can we get a building uh, appropriately? Um, and then, um, so when you look at all the changes from that piece, uh, it's it looks worse than it is, <laughs> but uh, some of the other strategies we had were remodeling, uh, or were actually on the uh, the lamplighter uh, property that you own, um, on the uh, uh, right over here in this zone. We we had talked about uh, for that swing space getting trailers, so there was about a million, million and a half uh, in the budget for that. So if we get another building and we have the swing space available within that building, uh, that one and a half million comes back on, onto your side uh, as good money being spent on a building uh, that you might, uh, you know, have uh, for the future. More of a long term than a temporary yeah. expenditure. It's, you know, it's making making sure your assets are, uh, are all in line properly like that. So this looks kind of bad uh, from from certain sense, but Something as fundamental as a change like that really makes the plan uh, look a little different. So um, the other thing that we, we uh, had to work with uh, was finalization of, of the monies that you have available from ARPA and, uh, and uh, bond uh, monies that were available, which uh, Bruce will talk about in a little bit. But uh, <clears throat> so we started looking at what we could get for that money in it, through the priorities that we had established uh, with your teams uh, overall. So uh, this plan um, looks looks a little cleaner, but it's uh, it's pretty much pr pretty close uh, to what we had. Uh, so now we're suggesting a, another building as a as a uh, uh, a way to make things work, uh, as gives us a permanent home for the public defender's office. 
gives us a permanent home for uh, hopefully building grounds with that uh, as we go. So that's kind of your the uh, the number one uh, A and B kind of thing there, along with the uh, the concourse building, and then um, then in lieu of um, putting the public defender uh, in the parking. Uh, deck and and the uh, the parking structure with the sheriff's uh, law enforcement parking has uh, we're we're back to the idea of uh, creating a another jail tower uh, in that kind of open space in the middle. So uh, on your screen, it's this four A and four B area that we're looking at there. <laughs> so our our initial plan is to start with about 148 spaces there and do the remodeling at the lower level of the main jail to get the um, intake center uh, properly situated. Um, so that's kind of the big, the big move there. And then we're, we're still uh, looking at the public safety building where the, the upper three floors are, are set up for the, the state's attorney in that move. Uh, the first floor, uh, you know, we're probably deferring some of the work there, leaving that kind of uh, where it is. Uh, for now, at least, till to be a little further along, and then see where the some of the other needs are. There's potential for uh, uh, courts there. There's potential for uh, building and grounds. There's you know all kinds of different things that could happen there. But as a good master plan kind of keeps moving, you kind of look at it, you make adjustments, and uh, you know work work with you to to make sure we're we're continuing on the right pathway and getting the best dollars. Uh, you know, uh, for the for the work we're doing. Um, so uh, the other other major piece of this thing is uh, with the courts. Uh, uh, most of that's been deferred. Um, obviously, you just approved uh, you know up on the on the, uh, the third floor, but um, the work that we had been looking at there, um, we're going to keep the um, court services on the second floor for example, instead of moving them out of the building. So little things like that that. Um, end up getting us to where we need to be uh, overall. So, <clears throat> so we, we did a, um, <coughs> we did last time, we kind of uh, showed, um, just so it actually is readable. <laughs> so that's uh, really hard in that small thing. So this, this really is uh, showing how the, uh, the admin building works with A being the new concourse building and everybody that's moving out for that. And then purchase about a 36,000 square foot building uh, would be the ideal size to uh, get offices for the public defender and building and grounds, so assuming it's close by. Um, and then using that as a swing space. Um, then, of course, um, we remodel uh, this building then for the new public safety building. Uh, that includes um, the 911 function staying in the building, EMA staying in the building, uh, kind of getting that all going. And then um, at the end of the day, the lamplighter site um, and potential of, of uh, obtaining a first street would be the um, idea to create the campus of uh, public safety there and parking. We've expanded um, uh, covers over the parking area so, so that they have a canopy. We had about half, half of that shown originally because in the original plan, the sheriff's uh, uh, parking was going to remain. And now we, if we're going to be building a building on that, we uh, need to do that. So we've, 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 we think we have some of that covered. So that's the highlights there. Um, the public safety, we've already talked about the, the three upper floors with the um, state's attorney area. First floor and the lower level, we're, we're kind of looking to see how else we might utilize those as the needs uh, come. But Ideally, it's it's something um, that you know. Uh, right now, we'll keep all the training in the basement, for example, and then uh, the first floor we can close off those areas and keep the elevators going up to where we're going. Then, uh, similarly with the court, uh, all the projects that we had identified before in terms of uh, uh, security, um, uh, potential juvenile courtrooms, things like that. Um, uh, are all really kind of in the future uh, as we look not in the next you know few years uh, to make the the fifty two million dollars uh, kind of work but uh, the idea would be in the public safety building you could have a couple of courtrooms for juvenile justice uh, courtrooms there uh, being served appropriately and separately from everything else uh, so that that'd be a that could be a good really good feature and uh, 
and then the rest of the, uh, the remodeling, which eventually gets you parking, uh, additional parking on campus, uh, pretty pretty far down the road, though I would think. And then uh, the jail, as we uh, had mentioned, we've been uh, we took a, a look at um, if we kept it on campus again, how would you do it? And ideally, you're, you're connecting the main jail and the annex with this new building, kind of in the in the hole there. Um, and you build it up so that you can continue to build it, uh, so that eventually you can get um, about uh, just right around 600 for that tower. Um, and then you always have the opportunity on the main jail, there's still another floor that could be added there. Um, and, and the reason we're not looking at that right away is you, you'd have to take care of all the infrastructure issues that you're aware of, uh, you know, with, with the piping that, that needs to be replaced and all of that. So it's actually more economical to build a new building in that location than it is to go up and add that floor because, you know, you're going to add 20, 30 million just to fix all the infrastructure uh, issues that we have in, the, in a later phase. So, um, so anyway, that'll be set up well and, and uh, pretty straightforward um, in how it connects and kind of gives us a, a nice round uh, turning there. So you can see in the future is the, uh, the vertical piping and cell fronts piece. And then, um, and then as we go, you just add housing units above it. Uh, as, as, as a plan right now. So, uh, so that is um, kind of where we're, uh, where we're at. From a schedule standpoint, uh, it rolls out really like Henry talked about. Concourse, you can see, is already in design uh, with the goal that that probably bidding in the in July, August timeframe, I think maybe September, October, it might slide a little bit. Um, and then roughly about an eight month construction period. So the way the bars read is the green bar is the design phase, anywhere from the seven to 10 month time frame, depending upon the complexity of the project. The blue bar in the middle is the bidding period, or roughly the two, two and a half months to bid and award a project. And then the, the kind of purplish or fuchsia, whatever that color is um, down below is then what we're showing as a construction. So the way we're seeing it sequentially, again, to help support the dominoes that Henry talked about is concourse occurs, you find this additional building that you can use and remodel and make work for public defender buildings and grounds, move them out, which then allows some of this building to be done. The second one we're showing here, which is a, a fairly big need, it's gonna take some time to get that done, is the main jail. And so we're showing roughly this 10 to 12 month design and document period to coordinate all the things that need to be done to make sure it's properly executed the way it needs to and to support the sheriff's office. A bidding period and construction on that. Construction on jails projects typically take longer. That's probably a, more like a 16 month period and there's a little bit of phasing that would probably occur. So the red dot at the end would be owner occupancy. So you can see on the jail, the move in is really kind of, I think we're looking at July of 2025 based on that schedule one, assuming all these start um, right, roughly in June or July of this year. Uh, the, the, the third one down then is the public defender build out and getting that space and that could occur quicker. You want to align that with the concourse so that when the concourse is done, you can move those folks and then get ready to move into this building. So then the CAD building again, the design starts, bidding occurs and then construction starts on this once you've moved the public defender out. Same thing with public safety, that one falls a little later. You do the design phase early so you can get the economy of coordinating all these up front uh, when you're doing all the planning, but you actually don't bid the public defender project or the public safety project, excuse me, until uh, late in 2024. And then that construction starts once, uh, once the folks are moved from, uh, public, uh, from public safety and you can get into that. The last one we show on the bottom, even though there's a I think yeah, outside <laughs> trying to get rid of yeah, um, work. <laughs> is, is the court space. And that's, you know, like Henry said, that's out there. I think you're doing some planning potentially in 2026 and depending upon funds, you know, maybe it's happening in 2027 or so. Yeah. So that's kind of a, the rollout that we're looking at from a budget standpoint. So again, when you're doing a master plan, we don't have all the details, all the very specifics to actually give a finite number. That comes as you get into the project more and develop the plans and the details and know all your materials and systems more. In a master planning approach, like we've showed you before, we show a high and a low, knowing that the numbers are somewhere in there. So you can see from these numbers, and I can't read that real well, but, but concourse, so, so for the concourse building, um, 
Henry, what were the, there were, can, previous, there, there were previous numbers on the right-hand side? Yes, on the right-hand side, and on the, kind of the gold yellow piece on those two columns is what we had presented in September to you. Uh, today is in the green is what where we are today in looking at the uh, the numbers. So the, the um, concourse building, uh, the numbers have gone up mainly because of uh, what you just experienced on the, on the courthouse. Uh, that number was crazy high and, and the marketplace here is continuing to, to strain. So making sure that number actually fits uh, was important. So we talked through that. Uh, so that, that's why that number has increased significantly. Um, the, the jail uh, itself, uh, again, we were remote previously looking at a, buying a building and all of that. So uh, those numbers have changed uh, a, a little bit uh, from that. Um, the, um, <clears throat> the new building for the swing space, um, um, the, the, the cost of the uh, potentially of that building is showing down below on the soft costs at about you know, five million is what we're estimating at that. So, um, so that number is a, is a you know hopefully uh, with right there uh, this building uh, those numbers are pretty much the same with uh, the exception that we added more canopies uh, to it, and then um, public safety building uh, we're just showing the three floors uh, renovating and the courthouse nothing for the short term for this. Uh, this amount of money. So when you add all those together, that gives you the hard costs. So that's your bricks and mortar. You add a contingency to that of 10%. Um, that gives you now a total construction budget. And then from that, you add soft costs, which are in a range between 10 and 15%. Um, and then you add the building, uh, any purchasing of properties after that, because you don't want to add all the contingencies to it. All right, so that's, that's why it's down below like that. So it gives you a, a range of uh, between 48.8 and 61.1 million against the 52 that you have. So <clears throat> it's, um, it's doable. It's, um, we have to be very careful, make sure we don't go over. It's, you know, that's the money that's in the pocket. So that's, that's all that can be spent. So as these projects start um, getting put together in schematic design and stuff, we have to continuously monitor that and make sure we're within the limits uh, uh, so that you'll, you'll have success and we'll have success uh, with them. The other piece to this was then the future projects as well. So the next page really is the future projects. And these are things that would be, again, not, not handled in the current budget but looked at in the future. The additional uh, jail remodeling to address some of the infrastructure needs would be planned in the future. I think we are planning in this first jail uh, kind of remodeling project to do what we can to address the lateral that's dealing with some of the plumbing. So hopefully that minimizes some of the issues up above. So we're trying to address that now. But in the future, the total infrastructure would be done. Jail right. has housing capacity. <coughs> Henry talked about adding one to the jail, the second, third, fourth floors. Sometime in the future, the, the courthouse. Uh, we've we've shown escalation in in those to 2024, 2027. But again, those might have to slide depending upon available funds. Courthouse remodeling potentially occurring out like we show, and then right now the public safety to minimize some of the cost. Again, like Henry mentioned, you know we're not doing much with the basement. There's potentially some remodeling to the first floor, so there's some deferred cost on the public safety building remodeling. That's a much bigger, much bigger dollar value, obviously, and uh, will take a lot more and how, how we accomplish it, the, 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 the unfortunate thing is the need is there. And so it's just a, a question of how do you finance that and put that together. So we're, we're, we're at least to the 52 million and, and, and we think pretty comfortably uh, with that uh, from what we're looking at. So that is so with that, what we have. Okay, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> thank you guys for coming in presentation because yeah, as our as we are in the commission, we rotate committees, and so you know sometimes you have two. I remember when this first started out doing the facility needs, uh, we were looking at the funding. So we had uh, Cindy looking at how much the bond, all that, and we come back with some numbers, and they were like a hundred million dollars to do everything, and everything got narrowed down to what we needed. <clears throat> One of the things that really sticks out for me on this. Is the booking area 
addressing the main infrastructure that's in the ground, which was the biggest concern at that point in time. And, and I think that's, this has that in there, which I think I, we needed at the very minimum. So that includes that. But I appreciate you coming in because, you know, we try to give all the commissioners the minutes of all the building committee meetings, but th as things have changed since yeah. a, a lot in the last, and even out in the industry as far as remodeling and building new, I mean, there's a big difference in finding contractors and so forth. But this refresher, I think, I'm going to have them print me out another copy of this. Well, I've got the old one, but I think I need to go back through it. They, they emailed it out to us the other day, but um, I like hard copies when it comes to this stuff. <laughs> so to review, but uh, with that, I'm going to open up to the commission to see if they have any questions. Okay. Yes. This is just a presentation today. So, so Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. A couple of questions. Um, so this is a 10 to 20 year plan or the first remodel of the 52 million is a two year plan, five year plan? So the, the, uh, the 52 million is, is essentially a five, five year plan to get the highest priority projects uh, at this point at least. Uh, from okay. But it's a 20 year plan on the space needs right. to be clear. It's not, it's addressing the space needs for 20 years. Right. Okay. But once we address those issues in the, the five years uh, except for the jail, Everything else gets you to the 20 years, so you won't have to invest again in this building, for example. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Um, for me, the 20-year plan and 10-year and 20-year or even five-year plan makes sense. But to me, we're starting with 52 million. We could expand up to 119 to 147 million in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, I'm going to ask, and this is not on you guys. Who's going to pay for all the remodeling? And how are we going to pay for all the remodeling? Um, when I've seen buildings done, there's always a 10 to 20 year kind of plan. Mm -hmm. um, to me, um, we've done a lot of buildings in the last, since I've been here. In the last five years, we've done Pivot Point, Care Campus. We've remodeled um, the courthouse. Now we're going to do public safety. We're going to do county administration. We're going to do jail remodel. I've never seen anybody be able to do this much work mm -hmm. in that amount of time um, because of we're seeing growth. But I'll keep seeing. Number one, we have a staffing shortage now. Who's going to fill the buildings? Number two, um, we got to be more creative with the space to a certain extent because who's paying for it? The working class is going to pay for what we are doing today in order to make a future for Pennington County. And we keep saying, well, we're going to need more services. We're going to need more of this and that. But um, you're also going to need people to pay for it. And you're going to need the staff in order to staff the 10, 20 year plan. So we're going to spend and we're going to remodel and we're going to do all this right away because we're saying it's going to have growth. Well, is it, is it different from the last 10 to 20 years? Because I might have growth, but I, I would no longer in my business, um, I, I would space it out a little bit more than what we have today because of budget, because of staffing, because of a lot of creative things that have happened in the last couple of years. So I'm not always in agreement with everything we do. And I also know that buildings and grounds, um, I've always thought that they need a new space because talk about space needs out of everybody that's ever been here. They've been creative and be able to, uh, it sucked, I'm pretty sure, Mike and Kevin, um, in your buildings and grounds, but they've took everybody's needs before theirs. Mm -hmm. And again, um, that's one that I thought needed to be done. The jail and the infrastructure in the jail, that needed to be done 10, 20 years ago um, to to do a lot of these buildings, I understood, but to me, those two were my priority since I've been here, which has been now nine years, um, <laughs> long time. And we're just now deciding that maybe we should do some stuff with the jail. Buildings and grounds might get a place across the street, um, but all the other places we've always taken ahead of time. Um, if, if I was king or queen, whatever you call it, 
Um, I do the priorities first in those two cases. And the jail, of course, is never going to get smaller. Uh, we are hearing that we're going to get 30 more police officers. That increases what happens in our jails. That increases what happens with our public defenders. That increases with what... And so where is the city playing in this part of all this expansion and the things that they are making and putting back on the county? The state seems to do that real well. And now the city... Um, has always kind of been a partner in one sense and the other um, the public doesn't understand to a certain extent you want 30 more police officers then you better expect that you're going to have more people in jail you're going to pay more taxes and everything you want as a public is going to cost us more yeah. and commissioner in the estimate we are making the assumption that the city is going to pitch in their portion for the remodeling, especially as it affects the police department as well. well and the jail and the other things that are going to make the difference because we have a pivot point project, we have a care campus project, but you add 30 more police officers, that is an increase on every service we have in Pennington County. Mm -hmm. And I'm not against police officers or that service happening. That's, that's part of what happens. But being on the city portion before and then going into the county, you start seeing the effects of what other people or other entities are doing, but they forget what they're doing uh, to the next step or what comes to the next step of what you want. Court services, everything else in Pennington County. So when we've done that, we've also increased cost. And now we're saying that we need these buildings more than what those costs are coming from what's coming next. Everything we increase is also increasing our costs, our our electricity, our, our utilities, our buildings, our staffing. And we're saying right now, if we, we put in 52 million, that we have the staffing, the cash flow, and the things to move forward in Pennington County with all those five, 10, uh, 20 year plans. The 52 million is gonna be a huge plan to try to staff and do what we do now. Um, I'm just worried. I, I'm not worried about what you guys are doing and what you guys have said. I just, I've ran buildings and I've ran things long enough to know that there's there's other effects and we're only including buildings and we're saying the staffing. We forgot about all the costs and all the things that come with that. That 52 million is just buildings. I'll keep saying that guys, it's just buildings. We have to be able to staff and we have to be able to pay our people enough, our employees enough to staff those buildings and want to stay with us, let alone retain them to get others. So i um, just a little bit worried about where we're going and, and what the future of Pennington County for, for cash flow and, and what we got to do next in order to plan a little bit different except instead of just on buildings, but employees and other things that, that matter. Right. Being here for this long, um, this is worrying me because I don't think I've ever seen this much expansion. Everything is, every building needs to be remodeled right now. And that's just not real business for me. It's, it's a need and we all have needs, but it's not really good business to do it all at once and not see the effects of pieces and parts first before you do the whole thing. So that's not on you two. That's on us to make uh, good decisions and make sure for the future that we have covered every piece of that. Sure. So. I just I do want to say, Commissioner, we've dealt with a lot of counties over our careers and whatnot, and you have done and and I got to give Mike and Kevin tremendous accolades that you're really working hard to reuse existing facilities as much as possible, right. and that that helps to save a tremendous amount of money versus building everything new. So purchasing the concourse rather than building new, remodeling this building for public safety to allow for that expansion. You know, again, very smart moves to minimize the overall cost in the long run by yeah, using your existing buildings. I think in the past we have minimized in the wrong spots and uh, maximized in others, which um, I think jail and public, I'll keep saying jail and public, uh, the buildings and grounds are two that have been lacking for years. And to me, that was a no brainer, but um, the concourse I was in agreement with. Um, I think we needed to do that. Um, but we keep saying we need more buildings, we need more space, we need to remodel this. We need... I don't know where the pot of gold came from, but um, we, we do have some bonding. We have some money for 52 million, but there's, I, I keep saying there's other needs besides just buildings. Um, to add to what we are putting in these buildings. It, 
everything costs money, not just a building. Mm. It costs money for people. It costs money for utilities. It costs mon money for remodeling. And we're saying we got 52 million right now for buildings. Thank so <clears throat> that's, um, I'll just keep putting it out there and, and, and see where it goes. But um, you guys have done your job. Um, buildings and ground have done their job. That's what their job is, is to take this commission and what, what we think the needs are. And you guys did your job well, and so did they. Um, but I think it needed to be, um, we didn't need a building every every day. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We didn't need to go find and make sure we had a remodel and everybody gets a new building and have enough space for the next five years. So it's, I still think it could have been done a little bit differently on how much we buy and how much we model up and switch everybody all at once. Thanks, I mean, I've never seen any business do it in two years or three years in order to make that expansion. It's usually 10 to 20 years. So some of this is, I understand that the other 119 and what's it, 119 to 147 is next, 52 million now. Um, the only thing I would caution the commission, and I, and I don't mean to be you can be up straight. Anyway. <laughs> You're up, you can be up straight, sir. That's it's, your job. It has to do with inflation. And I'm always going to try to give our clients the best advice ever. But when you look at 5 to 6% per year, which is, has leveled out from what it was in that spike, and you take and take a project and you look at a 5 to 10, 5 to 6% year inflation and you push it out 5, 6, 8 years, it's substantial funds. So that's the only thing I'd caution. Well, sometimes uh, it also tells you it's not the right time. So I've learned that in business. Sometimes it's just not the right time. You do what you have to do and get things done, and some of that can can uh, be put off or um, be done a little bit differently creatively in order to make it work. So um, that's what we generally do with our buildings or what we do. So um, that has to, doesn't have to be with the county in one sense, but the other, I think, if uh, the constituents have to do that, so should the county in order to make things work for everybody and make a good future for our employees as well. Again, I'm more into the employees than I am the buildings to a certain extent. And employees need their space, but I also understand that um, they want to get paid what they have to get paid in order to retain them as well. So thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Ross, connect. I guess I want to say, you know, thanks to Building and Grounds and the Building Committee because when, when you you know we, we know that we're going to probably need more space. I don't know that it's critical right now, but if we went and went out tomorrow and tried to buy ten acres, uh, have that site prep, asphalt engineering, and then you got a seventy-six thousand square foot building, and they identified the building uh, and at ninety-two dollars a square foot. Yeah. I thought that was uh, really looking after the taxpayer's money. Now, granted, we're going to have to do some renovation, but when, when, when it's all said and done, if we had to do all that today or tomorrow or five years, you're looking at roughly $30 million. You can take that 76000 times $400 a square foot. That would be your site, your site prep, engineering, soft cost, hard cost. So I think that was the right move for the county. But uh, I agree with Deb. You know, we only got so much money and uh, I guess we're just gonna have to really identify our priorities. Yeah. Another question I had, you had so much space per employee, does that include common area, restrooms, hallways, and? and it's, it's the overall uh, okay. gross building areas by the components. Okay, yeah, that was another question. Yeah. The only thing, other question I'd have, and this is just inf informational for us, when we did the facility needs, uh, study, you know, I was really surprised at what some of the requirements that we had as far as court services and victims assistance, keeping them so they don't in contact. Them. And so, I think that's where the public defenders and the state's attorney's office and some of that and court services all we had to look at some of that in order to separate. <laughs> if I'm correct, yeah. I mean, there was some requirements. So yes. Well, I thank you guys for coming and presenting. We appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, folks. Have a good day. Okay, thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
That brings us to <clears throat> items from the highway department. And then... Morning, Commission. Sean Smith with the Pennington County Highway Department. Um, item A, we are looking for authorization to purchase bulk diesel and gas products off the state contract. Um, today, we're looking at the uh, Rap City Division, which would be with Harms Oil. Um, Hill City New Underwood would be with uh, Moyle Petroleum. And then we'll bring uh, the Wall Division at the next Commission meeting. Um, just kind of a look at some prices. Um, Obviously, in the last few years, they've spiked. They're starting to come down a little bit. Um, 2020, diesel was $1.48. 21, it was $2.42. 22, it was $4.92. Uh, this year, we're looking at $3.71. Uh, gas in 2020 was $1.12. 21, it was $2.25. 22, it was $4.09. And today, we're looking at $3.19. So um, our fuel here in the Rapid City area, we... Uh, we have other county entities that utilize our fuel island, uh, the Sheriff's Department, Weed and Pest, IT, Rapid City School District, uh, up in Hill City, the DOT shares that yard, so they utilize that, the Sheriff's Department utilizes that. Um, we currently budget uh, about 600000 uh, per year. That's up from 2019 considerably just to handle the fuel costs. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thanks, Sean. Is there any questions for Sean? Yeah. Ms. Hadcock. Motion to request authorize Highway Department to purchase bulk diesel and gas products from state contract list from contract number 17752 Harms Oil, Brookings, South Dakota, and contract number 17756 Moyle Petroleum, Rapid City, South Dakota. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Ross Connect. Any public comment? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number B, guardrail repair. Okay, item B, we are looking uh, to purchase guardrail repair off the state contract as well. Um, typically, this has been something we've done in-house um, with our annual bids. Um, however, we started reviewing the state specifications and found that they meet all of our requirements and figured this would just be an easier step. Um, so Hilt has agreed to honor the state bid pricing for guardrail repairs on an as-needed basis. Um, with that, I'll stand for any questions. Sean? Ms. Hadcock? So it's cheaper to hire it out than it was to do it in-house? Uh, where we were running into issues was the mobilization costs. Um, mobilization costs, what do you mean? So when, they, when we call them on an as-needed basis, there's a mobilization okay. charge or fee on that. Okay. Um, so winter costs are typically more, so we try to... Try to budget what we can and get by with it at the time. Um, but uh, to, to make things a little cleaner and everything, um, to go off the state bid, it, it's essentially, yes, it's a little cheaper um, on what they're getting for costs, um, and this kind of cleans things up on our end. Sounds good. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'll go ahead and move to authorize the highway department to purchase guard rail repair on an as-needed basis from Hilt Construction, Rapid City, South Dakota, utilizing the state contract for project 000N-469, PCN I-77H and 00P-469, PCN I-77J. Moved by Ross, next seconded by Hadcock. Any public comment? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, award recommendation for box culverts. Uh, so item C, we're looking for uh, award recommendation for TDM in, uh, construction uh, to replace uh, a couple culverts up on Wilsey Road. Uh, we're going to be replacing them with a box culvert. This uh, was originally from a 2019 storm damage. Um, this is a FEMA partially FEMA funded project. Um, we, we took the time to go through and, and work through all the FEMA um, requirements and everything. We looked to do this last year while we were up there on our on the Wilsey Road reconstruction, which was also part of this damage. Um, we just didn't have the time or the manpower to be able to complete it at that point in time. Uh, we've got a deadline to, to get this completed by the September of this year. Uh, with our current workload and manpower, we just it didn't seem feasible to be able to do. So we looked to uh, put this out to bid. Um, we had an engineer's estimate of two hundred twenty-one thousand uh, dollars. The lowest bid came in at one hundred forty-five thousand five thirteen, uh, so about seventy-five thousand dollars under the engineer's estimate. 
a large part because they're located at a wall. So their mobilization fees were considerably less than the other bid. Oh, Chairman. Ms. Hancock. I'll take, um, take, I don't know what I'm saying. Motion is request the word BC 2023-1 box Culver Wilsey Road to TDM excavating wall South to go in the Mount of 145. Thousand five thirteen eleven. Second. Moved by Hancock, seconded by Rosknecht. Any public comment? Any for the discussion? Seeing none, all in favor to get saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Black Hills National Forest Livestock Card Agreement. Okay, so item D, uh, this actually stems from a cooperative agreement that we entered into with the Forest Service in 2018. Um, each year we do our annual uh, livestock guard inspections, um, identify those that need repairs or cleaning. Um, we had, this year we identified 10 livestock guards that need repairs and or cleaning. Um, and then this agreement would allow Pennington County to complete the work and the free Forest Service to reimburse us for that work. So. Thank you, Sean. Any questions from Sean? A public comment? Look for a motion, Ms. Hagan. Motion is a request to approve agreement that our number 23-RO-1102030-04 with the Black Hills National Forest for Livestock Guard Work. Second. Moved by Hightock, second by Rosconet. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor and keep us saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item E, Joint Powers Maintenance Encroachment and Financial Agreement on Lamb Road and Reservoir Road Intersection, John. Okay, item E is, uh, is a safety project that we've been working with the South Dakota Department of Transportation. Um, this utilizes roadway safety improvement federal funding. Um, this, this intersection was identified as, as in need of some corrections. Um, we, there's a guardrail out there that we typically have to do repairs on at least two to four times yearly just because of accidents. Um, those repair costs, Pennington County, over the last three years, have cost the Pennington County about $23,000. Um, we're currently working with uh, FMG, the design team in the South Dakota Department of Transportation. Uh, what they're looking at doing is kind of lowering that hill there to improve the site distance so you can see the intersection better and then kind of improve the, the design of that intersection. Uh, the overall estimated cost for this project is uh, $1.28 million. Uh, Pennington County will be responsible for 10%, so about $128,000. That does not include the right-of-way acquisition or the utility relocation that we're currently working with the landowners on. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. Any questions for Shaw? Nope. Chairman? Ms. Hadcock. Motion to request approval of joint powers, maintenance, encroachment, and financial agreement with the South Dakota Department of Transportation for Project PH6637-1 PCN 08W0. Second. Motion was made by Hancock, seconded by Rosconnect. Any further discussion? I'll just make one comment. Thanks, Sean, for bringing this forward. It, it just sounds like it was a safety item. You guys decided, looked for the funding for it and yep. found it. So I yep. appreciate that. Yep, absolutely. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item F, agreement uh, provided on federal funds loan, South Rochford Road rec Reconstruction. So item F, uh, earlier we had uh, applied for a loan uh, with the South Dakota Department of Transportation Commission. Um, they approved that loan and then they also awarded the project to Loiza Construction for South Rochford Road. Um, so this is just, uh, just this is the agreement for that, that application that they approved. Um, currently we have $4.255 million in our, available in our STB, STBGP funds uh, for 2022 <laughs> they keep changing these acronyms so um so we'll, we'll utilize that and then this loan amount is for 18.894 million over the next 15 years and they'll just pull from our allocated yearly uh stbgp funds okay. to, to repay that loan okay. so. so any questions for motion or motion excuse me <laughs> For Sean, any questions for Sean? Are you seeing none? I'd look for the motion. I'll go ahead and move to approve the agreement providing a federal funds loan to Pennington County with the South Dakota Department of Transportation for the South Rochford Road Reconstruction Project P6403 
10 PCN 08 P3. Second. Moved by Rosk, next second by Hadcock. Any public comment? Any further discussion? Uh, when is the start date? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> hopefully soon. It, it's taken um, us a long time to get to this point. And, and there's there's still a few more hurdles we need to uh, to jump through. Um, I was telling Commissioner Rosconnect, um, we're going to be doing a hall road agreement with, between us and Lawrence County and the state with Louisa Construction next Wednesday, uh, June 14th. After that, then they can start kind of moving in. So long as that they've had an approved uh, schedule with the state. Um, that was part of the holdup is their schedule they submitted need to be revised and re-looked at. Um, and then there's also been some trees that were, were left in the wetlands and in the ATP sites because we needed monitors on those. Um, since all that, there's been a, a long-eared bat um, regulation that's come up. So we have to make sure we get all those inspected to make sure there's no nest or anything before they can cut them. Um, okay. So they're working through with the DOT on that <coughs> portion to get the, the monitors and everything in place. So hopefully after next Wednesday we can, I know they've got a job trailer moved up there and they are starting to slowly mold in, but hopefully after next week we can really start seeing some, some shovels hitting the ground. Well, Sean, I just want to take the, the time to thank you and Joe both for your diligence on this and, and working with it. It's been, comes around, goes around, and it keeps coming back and yeah. different changes, the, you know, and that's the bad thing about government. Sometimes we end up having to wait a little bit, then more regulations yeah. come in and we have to re reevaluate and stuff. But it's exciting to see this project finally getting yeah. moving yep. forward. Yep. Yeah, you guys did a lot of work. Yeah, this started about my first week on the job with Pennington County three years ago, and it was going on long, long before I was here. So, yeah. yeah. But you guys did a good job with the right of ways and trying to get the safety items fixed. So I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. So Mr. we have. Sure. Do we have motion? Sean, what other agencies, uh, Forest Service involved too? Then. Yep. Relative to the bat. Yep. Yep. Is uh, this all local or? Uh, uh, the monitors will come out of pier. Okay. Uh, biologists and everything that will come and inspect these will come out of pier. Um, I know it was a week ago, maybe two at this point in time, or excuse me, where they met with the Forest Service, the DOT, Louisa, and, and Joe and Josh were up there uh, looking at these trees that were left. So, yeah. Yeah. Chair was in one of those chihuahuas with the long ears. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw one yesterday and it kind of looked like long ears. It was so cute. Okay, I changed the subject. <laughs> okay, we do have a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Chairman, Thank if you, I can have personal privilege for a minute. Yes. I'd like to rec uh, commend there was a man on the side of the road yesterday. He was from one of the either construction companies or with the DOT and I think it was a construction company. I was going, I was in a funeral procession from Mother Butler to uh, Black Hill Cemetery and um, there was a lot of etiquette that I think uh, people have forgot um, about funeral processions. But when we were over almost close to the Black Hill Cemetery, there was a man on the side of the road from either one of the construction companies or from the DOT and he actually um, had his head down and his hands crossed and um, watched us all go by. And it was the most amazing thing to see that someone had that much respect to stop work and to take time to uh, just be respectful to the funeral procession. So I don't know who he was and I, I didn't stop to ask at that time, but I just thought that one of our highway workers or construction guys had that much respect for the funeral um, procession, but a lot of the people in between, um, unfortunately didn't, but I'd like to commend that, that man. I, and unfortunately, again, I can't remember his name, but thank you for being so respectful, um, to the people that were out there. There were so many people at the funeral that were, were talking about this man and, and saw him do that, 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 that was pretty cool to mention, um, publicly that thank you is all I have to say. Du duly noted, it's the simple things in life that mean a lot. So makes a difference yeah. that people that little something that you don't think is that special is is very special, and people notice. That's the main thing, guys. People are noticing. So thank you. 
Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thanks, Deb. Next, we come up to item 18. This uh, again, items from building committee. And I'll recognize uh, project manager, Kevin Burton. Kevin Burton, uh, project manager of buildings and grounds. Um, last commission meeting, I presented the recommendation from the building committee to remove the asbestos laden insulation on the steam pipes in the tunnel around the courthouse. So today I'm asking for um, approval of that contract so we can move forward with that abatement prior to repairing the steam tunnel walls that are collapsing. Thank you, Kevin. Any questions for Kevin? Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. Thank you, Kevin and your team. You guys are taking care of the things we need over there. I know sometimes they don't only so say the most specialist things um, <laughs> to make your hearts feel good, but you do work hard. Um, you guys have made a huge difference in trying to clean up our buildings that we do have with the cash flow we have, and this is one of those things that um, is well needed. So thank you for doing that, Kevin. Mr. Rogers, Mr. thank you. Nope, I'm good. Uh, Motion authorize Mike Cole, <laughs> Buildings and Grounds Director, to sign the agreement with L and L insulation for the abatement of asbestos insulation on abandoned steam piping located in the utility tun tunnels around the courthouse with spending authority up to twenty thousand using a cumulative building fund. Second. Moved by Hadcock, second by Roskinek. If you guys noticed, I was just trying to nudge. To, we're following procedure. You can't make a motion and speak first, so that's why she. <laughs> He spoke and then I spoke. Yeah, so we're following procedure. We did good. Any further discussion? Any public comment? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, we come to Carol Bancroft, and this is items from the Compensation Committee. Item A. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Bancroft, HR Director for Pennington County. In the last meeting that the Compensation Committee brought forward a recommendation to revise policy 4.1 vacation and 4.3a sick leave to ensure that employees who have missed work because of either an injury or an illness that was work related that they would continue to accrue their benefit time. So the motion could read that I move to approve the revision to policies 4.1 vacation leave and 4.3 sick leave to include a workers' compensation exemption allowing employees who have missed work due to work-related injury or illness to continue to accrue benefit time. Thank you, Carol. Is there any questions from, or comments for Carol? Oh, I move, I move to Carol's motion. Okay. Moved by Hadcock. Second. Second by Roskinet. Any further discussion? I will make a comment that I like that. That's little things like that slip through the cracks when when people are sick and you, that a lot of people don't realize you got to have so many hours worked in a week to acquire your vacation. So stuff happens, and and so I like this. Appreciate um, compensation committee and Carol um, has been a wonderful HR for bringing some of these things that. Uh, employees have brought to her, Lloyd, so you're right. Um, she has been listening, yep. and it's working really well with the uh, committee and Carol. So. Sounds good. So we have a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Next, we have items from Commission Manager Holly Hennies, and we got quite the list. <laughs> I'm not as bad as highway today. No, no, but this is this this is good stuff. So we appreciate it. <laughs> All right, commissioners. The first item that I have in front of you today is the proposed purchasing and signature authority policy that the board requested we prepare earlier um, this year. So it has been through the state's attorney's office, buildings and grounds, the highway department, the auditor, and I will stand for any questions that you may have on the new proposed policy. So Ms. Holly, the only, I don't have any questions. I, I appreciate the work that you guys did. I, I'm sure this went back and forth between buildings and grounds because, you know, we do some, we have some different requirements for them. But this come forward from Ms. Hadcock and myself under items from chair and commission members to have you research and look into it. And this is what you came back with. And 
What it is is the spending authority for the department heads to be able to act quickly on, on contracts or purchases. And as you've seen today, a lot of these costs have exorbitated, have gone up and to do daily business, to have to come back to the commission, wait two weeks or even sometimes a month is could be a deal breaker and it ruins efficiencies. And so we wanted to take a look at the authority and make sure it fit, fit in line with uh, being able to keep the facility up and running and be able to be more efficient. And it's in line with what the bid laws are too as well with the state of South Dakota and what their limits yeah. are as well. So we're so. still following the state guidelines and, and requirements. It's just Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. It just makes things, you're correct, and we kept talking about it, efficient and effective highway having to come back for certain things. Um, we're not doing anything uh, under... Uh, we're not doing anything against the law this way, but we're also making it efficient for them to move forward on their projects. So um, sometimes they get it too low where everything has to come in front of the board. I know the public needs to know what they do um, know um, from things that, you know, are taxpayer dollars that actually make the difference. So um, on both sides, um, taxpayers also want to be people to be efficient and effective and get their stuff done, especially in highway and other areas. Um, and then for our buildings, sometimes those things need to be done right now. Um, when there are emergencies or something, you know, things need to be broken that our people are um, using, you know, either walkways or different ways, what, different places that are emergencies that we got to get done. So um, thank you for moving this forward, Ms. Holly, and getting that done. Uh, we appreciate it. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the purchasing <laughs> policy for contracts and leases with signature authority as presented. Second. Moved by Rosknack, second by Hadcock. Any public comment? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, agenda management software. Yes, the second request I have for you today, commissioners. Um, Basically, I feel that we've hit the tipping point. Um, we've, when it comes to preparing agendas and running our public meetings, we've done our best to do it efficiently, effectively with the, you know, the resources that we have. And I just feel that we have hit the tipping point with our growth and how many more items uh, come in front of the board and feel that there are tools and resources out there that would be more effective and efficient. Um, therefore, my request today is to move forward with a new agenda management software package called Granicus. Um, we envision starting out with the our board meetings and planning commission. It has the ability to host unlimited uh, public meetings. It would improve public transparency, um, allow our citizens better searching abilities if they want to go research any specific topics. Um, planning is in support of it. The auditor is in support of this. So I would certainly stand for any questions that you may have. Um, it's about an $11,000 annual fee, but we truly believe that we will absorb that with the savings and what staff would spend doing other projects instead of being dedicated to um, preparing agendas and packet materials. Yeah. You know, Holly, <clears throat> I read through this and just having the templates and the searching is going to be incredible. Uh, when I look at softwares and, and being able to cross train new people on it, it'd be a lot easier to, to train people into doing that than our current process. It's probably a little bit more difficult and hard to do it, but mm -hmm. uh, so SOPs for this are, I think, are going to be a lot easier than previous ones. So, Chairman. Ms. Hadcock. So, Mead County, how they set up their, how they do some of their stuff with their um, agendas and different stuff like that, we're going to change that so the public can see the agendas better and that kind of thing, or is this just setting up for um, your... I wouldn't office? necessarily say better, I would say different. Mead County uses a software called Board Docs. Okay. Um, Granicus is very similar, but I think Granicus has some better tools in it than what board docs does okay i just was seeing some of their stuff and it seemed simplified compared to what we were doing and it sounded like we were doing a lot of work so i'm glad 
you went in and looked at this, Holly, because I should say we, I said you and your team, so, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the uh, the department head, so um, that'll make a huge difference for $11,000. It'll save you a lot of, <laughs> over $11,000 probably in six months, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. just the time and effort it took to do all the work you guys were doing, so thank you for looking into that. Sounds right, good. I have to make the motion. Okay. Um, <laughs> make a motion, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'll move to approve the impl implementation of the new Granius Peak Agenda Management software. Moved by Rosknecht, seconded by Hadcock. Any public comment? Seeing none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number C. Black Hills National Forest Service news, re news release to withdrawal of acres in the Pactola Reservoir. Yes, Holly. Commissioners, I just put this back on the agenda. As I know, the board made a motion to appoint uh, Commissioner Roskinek, Commissioner LaCroix, and Scott Guffey to look into it and make a recommendation whether you wanted the county to make comments. Um, the deadline is June 20th, so that would be our next commission meeting. Um, we do have a citizen who is uh, going to request the board to consider a resolution in relation with this. So the board, um, I guess the way I see it, you have two options. You can continue this item until June 20th as to when we can put that additional information in front of you and you can consider it all at once. Um, or you could approve the comments today as presented and I can hold off on submitting those until the board's considered the additional um, request of the citizen. We have until 11.59 midnight on June 20th, on June 20th. to submit if the board chooses to submit comments on behalf of Pennington County. I would like to look at this if we can continue it. You, you're, you'd rather, we got to be unanimous up here today, folks, so. You do, and the um, citizen is here in the audience. Mr. Ellison is here so to speak. So, Ms. Hancock, you're in favor of continuing it? Yes, sir. And getting us the... Uh, information the additional information the additional the document and we can look at you can get that out to all commissioners get their feedback so we, at our next meeting we there's no changes that we, we can yes there would be no minor changes properly for a public that this okay. is what the request is okay i'm okay with mr that. chair mr Roskinek. so i've been kind of working with bruce uh emails so bruce do you want to speak on this just a little bit i did read the resolution and i Personally, totally support it relative, relative to that being my district that's going to be impacted. Um, thank you, Mr. Roskinek. Um, Identify yourself for uh, the yes, Bruce Ellison, <laughs> um, attorney, grandfather, lived on Rapid Creek, so this is very important. I mean, we get our water from the system. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, uh, my only, and I realize it's just a couple of days ago. This was the first, last commission meeting before the 20th. And so I, the county should take whatever time it needs to look at this and, and make whatever decisions, get whatever information it has. And, and I'm happy to wait until the 20th. I only get concerned because that's the date of the, it has to be submitted. Yeah. And that's why I kind of rushed to try and think of something, a proposed letter or a proposed resolution um, because of this time. But if the commission feels that there would be enough time on the 20th to address this if it was approved in whatever form um, and to ensure that it gets, I don't know if it has to be postmarked or emailed. I, I can't remember exactly what the Forest Service or the BLM yeah. requested. But that was my only concern, that, that any, any position the county would take, that it be timely as, as much as possible. And I've been over the last couple of weeks where I would have raised this. A week or so ago yeah. so i apologize for that well no i appreciate you getting that to us i mean this is you know timelines with the force and getting your comments and always seem to sneak up on you and pretty soon it's there and if we have if we can get it in there before the deadline date it'll go into the public record and that's that's a, my biggest concern is it needs to be on the public record and we should do it right and which is review but both and <clears throat> Um, I will follow whatever the commission wants to do. Uh, I'm happy to make a presentation today. I'm happy to wait. Um, so at your pleasure. 
So we look for a motion probably to continue to the July 20th. June. June the June, 20th. sorry, June 20th meeting. So moved. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Roscoe. I'm just going to have uh, discussion with Mr. Roscoe. Mr. Ellison, can you just give us an overview of your resolution? Sure. Yes, we both attended the meeting April the 12th, 2023 at the REM quota, and it was a heavily attended meeting. Yes. And I think it's a step in the right direction, but we need to go a little bit further. Um, indeed. I mean, we have the Forest Service and the BLM proposing about 20,000 acres of our 195,000 acre Rapid Creek watershed. And I take the definition of the watershed from the state uh, administrative rules, which I submitted uh, the, a copy of the particular the rule. Um, there currently is a withdrawal of Pactola itself. The Forest Service BLM are proposing an expansion of 20,000 acres through an area where one of the companies, uh, F3, is, is getting closer and closer to doing mining operations. And so they added this. The, the thing that I and other citizens, I believe, at that meeting encouraged was that it's wonderful to protect this area around Pactola and what immediately goes into it. If we don't protect all of what goes into it, though, then we're really not yeah. protecting our, 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 our primary uh, reservoir. And, and I saw something very briefly the other day where um, the Forest Service was releasing some additional water, and they talked about releasing it from Deerfield Reservoir as well as Pactola Reservoir. It's all part of the same system, but it was to provide additional fresh water under the circumstances. And I thought, well, that was nice because there is that recognition that we have to go even above Deerfield, uh, Castle Creek, uh, the, that area up in there, because it all contributes. Everything that's above upflow, uh, upstream, goes into what we're trying to protect. So in short, it would simply be to urge the county to come out in public and to um, recommend to the Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management that they include the entire watershed so that we're properly protected. Well, thank you, Bruce. Thank so you. Bruce, a couple of weeks, was it last week or the week before? Uh, Lloyd and I had the opportunity to go on an echo flight. Oh, great. And okay. uh, so we, we flew over some that watershed area that you're talking about, and then some of the mining activity that you're seeing up in Lawrence County. But, uh, you know, I agree. The headwaters of Rapid Creek are way up by Black Fox. That's where the water literally comes out of the ground. And if we don't preserve that, then I think trying the, the 20,000 acres, it just uh, doesn't make sense because you have to go to the source. So I think that's what the red, your map uh, was very helpful, and I think everybody at that meeting on the 12th of April, you know, agreement that we need to protect our water source. And I'm so glad you got on that flight. I, I, it was a real effort once we heard that flight, the number of us heard that flight was coming in. We thought it was imperative that the commissioners be on that flight. So, Bruce, once we, if we approve the resolution on the, our next meeting, who do we submit that to? Do we go right to the supervisor's office? Well, and that's the question. I was going to ask if the county perhaps probably could explore exactly the process so if it's on the same day as it's due it can then be expeditiously done and it's i think it may be able to be done by email it's it there's a portal with the forest service yeah. that i go online and okay. submit the comments electronically chairman you'll be able to do it right before the end of the work day mm -hmm. chairman so are you worried about the mining is that or protection of the watershed or are well, you looking all at all the pollutants that have issues. Is that why you're for this? I guess I'm not understanding. Sure. Well, we're talking about a mineral withdrawal, which would just simply be for basically hard rock mining. Okay. That the is currently in place on the lake or on the res Pactola Reservoir, on Deerfield Reservoir. What the Forest Service and the BLM were proposing was an area to the west. Um, where the water's coming from, a lot of it through North Rapid Creek, South Rapid Creek, but you've got some coming out of Lawrence County. It goes right into the area where the mining is, a lot of exploration is going on. So what this would do is, instead of just covering part of the area, it would request to cover all of the upstream areas that would contribute to what constitutes Pactola Lake and what goes into our aquifers from the 
because it is a recharge area throughout that area too. So there's only one hard rock mining company, isn't there, in South Dakota? There are a number of companies that are doing active exploration. One is right. the three, which this area particularly covers. There's another company called MMR, which is outside of this area, but still within the watershed. The map that was prepared and which I provided, um, also you'll see a lot of claims outside of the watershed too. And that's another issue when we get to the hard rock mining ordinance later. But, but um, what this would do is this would just help protect our water. That's my interest, is protecting the water. So, um, and I like protected water too, but I also understand mining to a certain extent. Um, are they the most contributing uh, factor for pollutants of the water? Or is it um, other contributing people? Um, so, we keep saying mining, but we're not talking about septics. We're not talking about other things that are actually major pollutants of the water through these through these towns and these areas that people are worried about mining. So for me, I also understand on the watershed, that's not the only rule what you guys are doing um, and what this is going to do. I have to look into it more, but when we did it the first time, it had some major implications for ranchers and farmers and different people that actually for the watershed, you guys, when you brought the first part of your uh, watershed issues forward, um, you keep talking about mining, but you're not talking about the other factors and who the, who's affected. So I, this is my reason for continuance. Bruce, if it's just about mining, um, we only have one right now. We could have more for the future. And it's not just your area, Ron. Everything that uh, is affected in Pennington County, because it's your district, there's five commissioners that um, protect that area, not just you. Um, so when you keep saying it's my area, it's me, um, you say that a lot. Um, that has to do with all of us when we make uh, decisions. It's not just you. It takes three votes for your district, my district, or anybody's. Um, for me, I appreciate the work you do and you put into your district, but um, when I make decisions, it's um, I have to look into all of your district, my district, or anybody else's to make good decisions, and that based, I believe, on all of our commissioners. For this, again, Bruce, I will look into it more Please. so I know the facts of the withdrawal of the protected area. Um, sometimes you can protect an area by what you do with um, withdrawing it, and sometimes you can make it worse by some of those protection rules and regulations for the people that are around it. So if it's just about mining, that would be different, but I don't think it is. This is only about asking having the county request that the Forest Service and the BLM expand the mining withdrawal to include the, the water that goes into the areas we're trying to, that we get our water from, that we're trying to protect. There, all of the other issues that you raise, uh, I mean, I live on Rapid Creek. I understand well that some of my neighbors don't have good septic systems. I'm happy to explore any of those other issues, but that's not what this is about. Well, it says the purpose of a request to withdraw is to protect cultural, natural resources in Pactola Reservoir, Rapper Creek watershed, including drinking water for the Rapid City Ellsworth from potential impacts of mineral expo exploration and development. The Pactola is the largest, deepest reservoir. So I um, understand from mining, so you're going to shut down every mining company, and it's, and it's one right now, and you're saying they're the direct cause of what has polluted, maybe in the past, but for the future of the Black Hills watershed, when I keep saying, if we look into the watershed and the Black Hills watershed, I don't think if you look into it uh, closely, you're going to find what um, also there are huge contributors to uh, polluting our water. It's ask Sheridan Lake, ask, ask the other areas that have been uh, polluted by septics and other things mm -hmm. from up in Hill City. And um, we're worried about a mining company when we are also should be worrying about, if we're talking about watershed, I'm with you on watershed. Let's talk to all, let's talk about all the contributors in those areas. I think, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Hancock, I think that would be a wonderful thing to yep. expand the discussion about all of the things that potentially contribute to degradation 
of our water resources. Right. My personal concern is that the Central Black Hills watershed not turn into what the Northern Hills watersheds are, which right. is a constant problem uh, in terms of contamination. And But I will, I, 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 please explore, ask any questions that you want. This is only has to do with the Forest Service BLM proposal right. to yeah. give a mineral withdrawal. And I would be happy to work with you or other commissioners on any of these other topics. Uh, I, I would like to be able to eat the fish outside of my house uh, yeah. right now. And that can't because of these other pollutants that you're, you're talking about. Right. So I, I, I think I applaud you and the commission for being concerned about our, our water. And this is a first step about one very real potential source of a future problem that I am hoping for my family that we can avoid. And, and all this would do is this is provides a basis for a two-year study to determine whether or not a 20-year mineral withdrawal, mineral only withdrawal, would be appropriate. And this for, and that's for what they've identified with the 10% of the, of the watershed they're talking about. This would hopefully expand that to really protect it from at least this one source. And um, hey, let's work on the others, I think is a great idea. Well, for me, for me, if you're gonna work on something, work on it. If you're gonna work on a watershed, that's a major issue and you're saying it's mining, it's not. It has to do not just with mining, it has to do with all those other contributories that are huge issues for contaminating the water. So um, for me, uh, I know we're continuing, continuing this, but I will get better information. Um, so if we're going to go after mining, then we should go after everything and ask Rapid City. Um, at, look at Rapid Creek. Look at the contributors from stormwater coming off and into Rapid Creek from Rapid City or other any, any other cities. Again, Hill City was a big contributor of septics and things for Sheridan Lake, if you remember how green Sheridan Lake was for a while. That was mining. Oh, you understand. couldn't drink the water, and you shouldn't have drank the water, and rapid and and look at the fish that were in and still in Sheridan Lake. They got sores and stuff on them. So, um, so, so I just I, I I'm not against you, Bruce, but um, if I'm going to do watershed, I'm not going to pick and choose who's who's affecting that watershed. These cities and these uh, counties. We all have to get together and clean the watershed, and we are part of those contributors that are making that difference of killing fish and doing everything also that you're saying that mining companies are doing. That has happened and been proven um, through the years from humans and what they have done naturally to them by not addressing one issue and not the other. How about that is what I got to say. The county passed a wonderful septic system uh, requirements a few years ago. When they did so, they didn't say, let's also tackle. This is something we can tackle right now. Let's take advantage of it. Right. This, what, what I'm requesting, is an expansion of what the BLM and the Forest Service are saying about tackling one part of the problem. If we, if I'd love to attack it all at once. Um, I'd also like to see us do what we can while we can as we work towards that goal of trying to look at all of the potential problems. I just remember this, the, what one scientist said, we have to remember that all the water that we have is all that we're ever gonna have. We don't make new water. But has mining um, from gonna... the past, mining from the past is different than mining now, just like septics from the past are different than they are today. So we're gonna judge what happened to the water in the past, which is gonna happen, and you're saying is happening right now. You have that one mining company that is being the contributing person that is, is poisoning the water or doing what you're saying. I guess what I'm saying is, septics and everything have changed from the past and what they're doing. You're saying what happened in the past will happen again. That's not fair. That's not fair for any of the things in the watershed that what happened in the past is different than it is for the future. So um, for me, like I said, I need to look into um, how many mining, what, what's the difference, and I have before. I'm not for mining. I'm not for um, uh, making the water 
um, turn into something it shouldn't. But I'm also going to, you already know me by now, Bruce, I'm going to look into the information and the facts and not base it on uh, past experiences. Uh, what happened in the past with those, the rules and regulations have changed for mining as well as septics and other things to try to help our watershed. Um, how we do to move forward and make it better. Maybe that is no mining at all, if that's the major contributor. If not, it might be other things that we need to do for Pennington County or even the Black Hills area, so. Okay, I'm gonna interject here a little bit. This is a continuation motion. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you know, and, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your comments too. And Thanks. as I said, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to work on the other issues as well. Let's get to what we can. And this is really gives an opportunity to study what mining impacts would be. That's the whole purpose of this moratorium. It's to allow for time to look what would be the, the real impacts if we were to start allowing broad scale hard rock mining, which is a very real potential up in this area above stream from, from Pactola. Okay, this is Thank a very, very passionate. Much. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. So we do have a continuation motion on for uh, June 20th. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Next, we come to item D, and this is Cindy Muller. This is the proposed resolution for Black Hills Association of County Commissioners, South Dakota SDACC, a re resolution to support amending the current South Dakota state law. I'll let you explain, please. And I got questions. Okay. I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. Um, Again, Cindy Muller, Pennington County Auditor. With our new hours, it's kind of apparent that we need to alter where it says in the state law for elections uh, that things are due by 5 p.m. Um, yesterday at 5 o'clock, we had to put up a sign that said there was no more absentee voting after 5. Didn't have a whole lot of people come in after 5, but there were a few and a couple of them weren't, weren't really happy, but thankfully they had today from 7 to 7 to go vote. So I went through the section on elections and tried to pull out everyone that referenced that 5 p.m. deadline so that we could try and get that changed for next year. Okay. You answered it. Except for... <laughs> <laughs> you want me to I, No, I... No, I... I'm taken, I'm taken. You know, reading through that stuff, it, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> it seems like it repeats itself, but I, I caught the part where it was, you're changing the, uh, without the business hours. Yeah. And I just want to take this point in time to, to, and I think, you know, I called you on Friday. I, some of the concerns I got from citizens, uh, about us not being open on Friday during voting, mm -hmm. if, how are we going to address that later on? And I, I'm not, part of what I told this person was, you know, our working hours, our, what our working hours, campaign managers, have to take a little bit of responsibility also as far as they make sure to tell you how when you can vote early, uh, when's the last time to register, but they, maybe they should include hours of operation so the voters know. I mean, there is a little bit of personal responsibility and I think our, I think our community, our, our, commun our building, we've, we've gave in the media uh, the information of our hours of operation, we've had it posted for six months. And so uh, it, it's just a tough deal that sometimes people wait to the last minute. I would agree with that. And I think that we've only been doing this, you know, a full five months so far. So some people that haven't come in to renew aren't really aware that we're not open. I know I hear from people that like, hey, I went to do my plates on Friday and you guys are closed. Yep, we have been since January. So I think it's a matter that, you know, the longer time goes, people will get used to the fact that we are closed on Friday. Yeah. I, ju I just needed to voice that for the public so that address some of the concerns. And I sent out that you were addressing some of, you know, this time limit stuff to some yeah. people. So that's yeah. good. Is there any further comments or questions for Cindy? None here. Seeing none. Anybody want to 
Move to approve the resolution in support of amending current South Dakota State Laws 12 12-4, 12-6-8.1, 12-6-55, 12-7-1, 12-7-7, 12-8-8, and 12-19-2.1. That restricts certain elections, election rating, geez, can't talk, election related filings to being done by 5 p.m. Second that motion. Moved by Hancock, seconded by Rosknet. Any public comment? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. And this is a time for the commissioners also. Is there any directives for resolutions for preparations from the board? Do, is there any resolutions? Are you aware of any, Holly? Or uh, any more, Cindy, or from our... I'm aware of Okay. So as far as our department heads and so forth, I haven't heard of anybody wanting to bring it. Usually we have Janet and having some and some other ones, but I haven't had any unless you guys. So nothing further to bring forward on that. Next we come to uh, vouchers, item 21. Move to approve 730, 416, 49 for the vouchers. Second. Moved by Hadcock, seconded by Rosknick to approve the vouchers. Any public comment? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is items from uh, the public. I just see a few. You guys are waiting for an item later on the agenda? Okay. So we'll close public comment and I'd look for a motion to recess. So we can move to recess for 10 minutes. Moved by Roskinek, seconded by Hancock. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You ready? We're ready to go back into session. And next up on our agenda is item 23 items from planning and zoning. And I have Cody. Uh, yes, yeah. so Cody Sack, Environmental Planner. Agenda item A is Planning and Development Overlay Review PU 22-04. It's to review a planning and development overlay to allow a specialty resort that includes 10 spots, one tree house with living quarters, and a caretaker of manager's residence. The applicant and landowners, John and Tracy Weeby. Uh, upon review by staff, it appeared that uh, the applicant was meeting all the conditions of approval. So staff is recommending approval of extension and planning and development overlay PU 22-04 with conditions with the Planning Commission's concurrence. So moved. Moved by Hadcock. Second. Second by Roskinect for approval with 26 conditions. Is there any public comment? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B. Uh, item B is rezone RZ 23-06. It's to rezone 7.2 acres from agriculture district to rural residential district. The applicant and landowner is Free Range Rentals LLC. The agent is Davis Engineering. Location of the property is 23707 Burnt Fork Road. Uh, staff is recommending approval of rezone RZ 23-06 with the Planning Commission's concurrence. So moved. Hey, moved by Hadcock. Second. Seconded by Roskinect. Any public comment? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And I will say, folks, these were uncontested, the two uncontested items we had. I was supposed to read the paragraph before. Uh, next, we come to the contested hearings. Item C. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. Item C is public hearing of comprehensive plan amendment CA 23-05 for Pink Cabin LLC. KTM Design Solutions is the agent. And it's to amend the comprehensive plan to change a future land use from suburban residential district to urban residential district. And the Planning Commission recommended to continue comprehensive plan amendment CA 23-05 to the June 20th, 2023 Board of Commissioners meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Hancock, seconded by Rosknet to continue to the 620 meeting. Is there any public comment? Any further comment? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item D. 
Item D is public hearing of rezone RZ23-08 for Pink Cabin LLC. KTM Design Solutions is the agent to rezone 0 0.13 acre from urban residential district to suburban residential district. And the Planning Commission recommended to continue rezone RZ23-08 to the June 20th, 2023 Board of Commissioners meeting. Well moved. Moved by Hadcock. Uh, second for discussion. Seconded by Ross Connect. Uh, I just wondered what the, you know, what the, Planning Commission was their reasoning for the, the continuous. I'm just um, there was a significant amount of public comment during that meeting, um, and the applicants and their agents would have wanted to be present, and the Planning Commission wanted them to be present. They had, were actually present at the meeting, but they had left because we had a very long meeting. I don't think that meeting got over till like 3 p.m. that day. So, so it, this is out of the Planning Commission authority now, and it's. It's going to be the commissioners or right so the planning commission will hear it again on the 12th Great. and make the recommendation for you on the 20th okay very good Thank you. okay any further discussion seeing none all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye aye opposed motion carries item c or e sorry um item E is Ordinance Amendment OA 23-01 for Pennington County to amend Section 319, the Vacation Home Rental Ordinance. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended that the Board of Commissioners send the proposed Ordinance Amendment and the proposed document presented by the South Dakota Short-Term Rental Association back to the VHR Committee for review and comments. So during that meeting, um, there was a representative from the South Dakota Short-Term Rental Association who submitted a whole new ordinance for review. Um, so the Planning Commission recommended that it be sent back to the committee for review. i do that, you guys. I do have one public comment. Good. So we're right now, the recommendation is to send it back from, recommendation from the Planning Commission is to send it back to uh, the Vacation Rental uh, Committee. That'd be no nope. motion. No, okay. Hancock's made a motion to send it back. Is there a second? Uh, I'm going to second that. And it's seconded by Ross Connect. Uh, I do have one pub uh, public comment from, uh, oh, Jesus. I, I, you've been here so many times, too. I should uh, Miss Peterson. Is, my name is pronounced Dessel. Dessel. It rhymes with wrestle, if that helps. <laughs> okay. And, um, Dessel Peterson, 22598 Hazel Lane, in Rap outside Rapid City. And I am a member of the the big VHR committee and I was at that meeting where this was discussed and the commission had been moving along going through all of the items and then this industry group said well we have an ordinance for you and everybody was sort of overwhelmed trying to figure out what were they going to do with this new ordinance that was being proposed and I suggested it was my idea I suggested that we send it back to the VHR committee Jess Ginger, who is another member of the committee, was with me, and she also thought that was a good idea. She and I represent different perspectives on the committee. She's a, um, a, an owner, and I am a neighbor. So we are on, on sort of on opposite sides, and yet we have a very cordial relationship. And we both agreed that was a good idea. So that's what the, the commission then recommended to the board. <clears throat> Subsequent to that, I actually got a copy of the, the submittal, and it turned out it was not a whole new ordinance. It simply followed the same format as the, the com committee's recommendation, but it made many, many, many deletions. Yeah. And I, in, in your packet and your materials, I attached the two-page <clears throat> summary of what I saw as their deletions. So in my mind, it's really not a brand new ordinance. It is just looking at the same ordinance that we put forth, but they are deleting a lot of things that we recommended. Plus there are a few minor changes of recommendations on that part. So both Jess and I are actually opposed to the motion that you have on the floor to send it back to the committee. We think that would be a waste of our time because we discussed all of those issues at length and it really wouldn't make much difference to send it back to us because we already recommended those, those provisions to you and to the commission. So I would ask that you not send it back to our committee, but instead let it go back to the planning commission and they can review the ordinance and looking line by line, 
it's quite easy to see that they say, delete this, mm -hmm. delete that, delete that. And so it's really not that big a, big a deal as what we thought it was be. So that's my reasons for opposing the motion. And, and let me respond a little bit because I received, I was supposed to be at that planning commission, but I had another commissioner cover for me. So I got that email from the uh, organization at one o'clock in the morning because I get up at like three or four and I, I think it was about four when I read it and I sent him an email saying you can't drop something in the morning of the meeting and I explained our process that the county has you know we want to be we got to build the packets and commissioners got to be able to review it and go through it so it wasn't fair to the commissioners having to go through it and see that um and right now we're short three commission or two commissioners right now on this. I'm a little, you know, I read your email and I, after I got a chance to sit down and go through it, I think uh, I agree with you. But uh, I also want to be fair in the process and not be hurry through things. I know you guys have put a lot of work into this. You guys have. It's not easy doing what you guys are doing. I, I understand that. And you could tell from the meetings that it's even harder to run the meetings with with some of the oppositions on this. So I'm willing to let it go back to you guys. And Oh, no. <laughs> but I don't know what we'll do if it comes back to I, us, I, other than to say it. we recommend the same thing. Yeah, I mean, that's I'll, I'll recognize Ms. Haddock. Well, um, the Planning Commission felt like that it needed to go back and because maybe some of those changes might have had some good recommendations in them, not because you had an ordinance done and this needed to be deleted, this not. It's it's because just like us, it's for more discussion. Um, so I agree with the planning commission as well. And and it, nothing comes out of it, Dessel, and, and no changes are made and the discussion is like, okay, we're leaving it the same, that's fine, but that comes back with recommendations from you guys, at least you had the time to hear what other people said, because that's what we have to do for our committees or just being up here, Dessel. So nothing against that, you know, you know that, but maybe some of the other ones on your committee don't. Okay. Mr. Chair, Mr. you know, relative to the, I know you guys done a lot of work, but I'm still not uh, satisfied with the density cap. I think that, that uh, yeah, you can have 5% or 6% of the uh, single family residences in the county, but you could also put them all in one area. And that's what we need to define uh, because this is the phone calls that I'm getting is that, you know, it was a neighborhood and now I'm getting five. Yeah, there's, that's just too many in one area. If, if, if the neighbors object, I think we need to work on that. So your your issue is the concentration of them, right? Right. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I don't have a density problem. No, just I agree with having you. them too too many in one residential neighborhood, unless the neighborhood's designed for vacational rentals. I agree with you, Commissioner Ross Connect. I didn't get a lot of support on the committee for it. That was the problem. But well, we can we can try again. Well, the motion on the floor is is to send it back to you guys. And I guarantee you there's going to be, when it comes to back to the full commission, we're going to have some discussion then too. It may not be resolved in one meeting either. So I think it, it'll re, revive again. So, and, and we'll go through it again. So. Well, thank you for your attention. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, Jess. So we do have a motion on the floor to send it back to, uh, uh, the document to the short-term rental association back to the VHR committee for review our review our comments. Any further discussion? Say none. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Aye. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks. Back Planner. to work. Do we have any items from the commissioners? Or I don't have any items as chair. Is I, you, you can talk about the echo flight. Well, I think we'll let Deb um, go. I went to a critical luncheon of Elevate, and um, they had a panel there, and they had the lady that was running it from, I think she's the second in charge of economic development after Tom. And um, Rapid City has done some amazing stuff, but... Um, in what 10 years 
12 years since I've been on the city council, they're still in the same spot. They're still talking about the same issues back when I was on the city council. Um, crazy how it can, in some senses, it seems like it's changing. Um, my thing is, if you think it's such an amazing, critical hub in one sense, and then the other is saying, but we're lacking, I don't know. I don't want to know what we're lacking. I want to know the positive and what's the solution of that lacking. Um, I don't know. I haven't been to one for a while. And then, um, I don't know. It just was, I went to one before that on uh, elections and it was really good on what Garth had put on and how to be elected and how elections work and stuff. So I guess you just do a hit and miss like on anything. Um, but you also had a developer on there that was already got the job downtown. Uh, Chris Long actually was on there, he was good. He was the most straight up about growth and what's happening with the growth. Um, it's, um, I think he's a guy we need to look at for asking those questions because um, he's just came here from Colorado I don't know, five years or so ago. And he really has a good perspective on what's happening around here. And I really like what he has to say on some stuff. And then they had Kip, who's been in the city for a long time. So it seemed like the same old, same old. And then they had Garth that was with um, um, Elevate. So um, I think they could mix that up a little bit. Maybe I just missed that. So I'll give them credit for at least throwing these uh, critical thinking luncheons and see what people think. So... I am going to um, skip, put you at the, that we're doing committee reports. Item 24 is a time for, we have concerns for staff to look into something. It, it's a, a time for individual members to bring forth ideas or concerns to full board. Official action will not be taken at any time brought forth this time. Direction may be given to bring items back before board for future considerations. I think that's like what we did with that. Uh, we just did earlier today. But reports like that should go underneath reports from commission. It doesn't for matter. Some for some reason, I thought that's what we were doing. <laughs> I, don't I didn't interrupt you, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. No, that's fine. I mean, that, that I think to me, meetings and committees is not just what's written on our agenda, but it's what we've done during the week or since the last meeting. So, yeah, great. Different. Yeah. So. Been to those before? Those were critical. Yeah. It's been a while, but uh, they're good if you can make them. I mean, they they have some good meetings. Some of them are. I think some of them are just. Uh, Holly was a couple of years ago. You were starting to go to some of those leader leadership luncheons, and, and they have some good. It's been a while since I've been able to. The leadership ones I've liked. Yeah. So. But yeah, you can go ahead and go into your Pink County Housing Redevelopment and Compensation and Care. I'll cover the Care Campus. I was there for you. Pennington County, we're just we're still doing Dominion. We're looking into member um, going into RAD housing. Um, that's moving forward. We should be able to speak to some of the people that have evaluated some of our stuff at the next meeting. Um, budgets, of course, we got that done. Um, I didn't see anything. We get, and by the way, we get reports on the areas for from the police and different people, and um, some of that. Um, they do a lot of work. We actually pay the police department in um, our areas to help out because um, they do a lot for us um, in housing. So that's pretty cool. Care Campus, I missed that one. Get ready for a funeral. Um, and Compensation Committee, you guys seen um, what we went through today and we're looking at um, maybe some stuff for daycare with Holly and Carol. They're doing most of the research on there, um, getting some good feedback. Um, we looked at POT, or PTO, I always call it POT, pod. PTO, and um, they wanted to put that off till January, but I think there's some real critical stuff um, in there, and if you look at it, look at it, PTO, we have been um, incorporating a lot of the PTO um, stuff in our changes already, so 
Um, some of it I didn't understand why we couldn't do it right now, but, you know, we have a lot of things on our plate, so I'm going to respect the committee for their decision. Um, anything else? Um, oh, I did go to Ignite. Um, that was good. Some of my understanding um, of Ignite. I saw some of the players that I didn't understand. The only thing I didn't understand was why Barry wasn't in front with some of the mission people and stuff because he does that work. He gets the people that come out of the jails and stuff. So if I would ask anything, I would ask them to incorporate Barry because he's the next piece after those things happen. But Ignite is a process where they're going to do some training and stuff for inmates, and which makes sense because spending your time in there doing something productive, like any human being uh, in our community, if you can do something productive, keeps you out of trouble. And you're also getting trained for something that hopefully will be productive for you when you get out. So um, we'll see how that goes. Some of it I need to learn more about because I didn't get all of it, but um, most of it's you got to give people a chance to try what they want to try, and then they'll figure it out. The other thing is I'm getting calls on just another program. Um, if it's correct, are we, I don't know. I, I need to look into it more, but some of it, we're getting pro programmed to death in some of these areas of law enforcement and court systems and care campus and pivot point and different stuff. And um, I can't keep up with all the different programs. It's hard to keep up. So I'm not going to comment if they're good or bad. Um, I haven't looked into them enough, but um, I would hope, and you already know our department heads and people, they would have let go of some of the programs. I'm thinking if it wasn't a success or from talking to Liz on those programs, they have changed a bunch of them that aren't, you know, they've dropped some of the, the issues or some of the things that haven't been working and then have kept some of the things that have. So hopefully that's how programs should, or they should go away because it's just not working, but um, it's all good. Anyway, hopefully it's success. Ron? Mr. Chair, well, the only one I'd have the report on would be Pennington County Housing Redevelopment, and Commissioner Hadcock. It's covered most of that, but uh, one thing that I would add was the, we wrote a letter, wasn't it, Deb, to Black Hills Works? Yeah. Uh, relative to some dialogue uh, that, that Brian heard at one of the meetings. I think I just talked about it last time. They ended up um, saying that we let them go or something like that, and they actually came to us and said that they no longer wanted to, they wanted to get out of their contract. But then when they're at this luncheon, they were saying that we dropped them. But that wasn't the case. So Brian walked in at the time that the lady was speaking, and the lady's face turned all red, and um, she was not telling the truth. So um, looks like Black Hills Works was looking for some money at that point, it sounded like, um, but wasn't telling the truth on the issue. Um, so Brian got very upset who is very honest, very straight up. So he wrote a letter um, saying to the other entities and otherwise the circumstances and the facts on the situation. So I thought that was very professional in one sense because he's not a mean man. But he also, he protects, um, you already know you get enough criticizing that isn't truth that um, when something like that, that you did something wrong when you didn't, could it really hurt you, especially... Uh, Black Hills Workshop is a very good company. So you don't want that to be a negative impact when it wasn't. So um, I totally understood that. He protects that, uh, that housing authority like it's his own business, not like it's a government business. So I appreciate his, his thoughtfulness. It just made him very sad. It wasn't, he wasn't mad. He was just very sad that on the situation that, um, He's a good guy, and he didn't do anything wrong. And it was, I never seen him act emotionally on something. So I thought that was pretty nice that he was being professional about it in one sense and the other. Um, you got to be straight up with people, and it's not about the money for us either. It's about taking care of people and doing the right thing. So he was, he just pretty much said that. But I, I think generating the letter gave us closure. 
so that they really had a clearer idea how things happen because Deb's absolutely right. We, they came to us and, and out of our generosity, we did uh, let them out of that contract. So uh, the only other thing, I attended the Hill City Economic Development meeting and City of Hill City, they, they need a water tower. I mean, seriously. And, and same thing that happens to us, you know, the engineering uh, estimate was 1,700,000. Uh, when it came back, it was more like 2.83 million. And so now the county belongs to Black Hills Council of Local Governments, Hill City falls under that. And so I mentioned at the meeting that we should get together with Jennifer at Black Hills Council of Local Governments, which we eventually did, uh, four or five members. And she went over all these grants and then there and hopefully we could uh that was just a week and a half ago and she's going to look into these grants but there's one it's it's almost uh, uh given at seven hundred and fifty thousand that uh, they would qualify and there's some other options but uh we're you know the, the idea is to to, to find because when hill city had to make that choice they said we just can't afford it and the water towers off and you just can't sit there and live off of tourism and not have adequate water during the summer months. So we're currently still working on that uh, with Black Hills Council of Local Governments and how they can. And I think it, it's an awareness that the city of Hill City and, the, and Hill City Economic Development, they they need to be better communication with Black Hills Council of Local Governments and some of the resources that they have available. Other than that, that's all I really got. Thanks, Ron. Um, my first report will be on the WIR, the Western Interstate Region Conference. Um, the very first day, which was Wednesday, the highlight was I attended the uh, Board of Directors meeting and we presented all the stuff from um, Visit Rapid City, which we had the, the books for tourism, some pens, some coffee, notebooks, we did all that to all the board of the directors because it, they accepted Rapid City as their conference for 2025. So this was part of, get, part of getting the information out. We did put some of that information also at the last general session. And as I was at the table and people were looking at it and I, I was able to talk to some of the other people, uh, they go, Rapid City, great. Cool, I'm going. The guy from Hawaii says I'm going. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there's gonna we're gonna have some good people coming to the conference. But I I do want to say with that conference coming here in 2025, the biggest benefit to us is going to be our Black Hills area of county officials. You know, all these smaller counties not ever being able to attend one of these conferences and learn what's going on is 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 valuable that they're going to be able to come and do that. Um, one of the other highlights of that is I did an agricultural and rural affairs and energy and environment land use steering committee mobile tour, big long words for I think what we are doing here with trying to get the Missouri River over to the east eastern side. This was a tour of their diversion dam from the Virgin River. So we went up and in the mountains and you can, to their diversion dam and it's it's the way I explained it, Deb, is they built a tube like they did the diversion for Canyon Lake so they could dredge Canyon Lake. But they did this for I don't know how many miles, 20, 30 miles. They divert this water into a, a reservoir like Pactola so if this was man-made big and they had two of them and so they divert it that way and we so then we went and toured the dam where it's at and actually got to go inside the dam That's that they just built because the dam had, had collapsed I think about 15 20 years ago and flooded the area and so they rebuilt uh, that dam and they they treat uh, I don't know how many got 200 thousand residents with this I'm trying to look I I won't bore you with the details, but they have their water treatment plant there. It was, it was really interesting to see 
there was a couple of different classes I went to. One was on their, their development. You know, we say that we are the fastest growing. I see this all over. They showed us St. George's growing, how fast they were growing. And the reason why they were is because the people are moving there and they deal with vacation home rentals too and they're doing all that stuff. But uh, this dam that they built, was in, they started in 1962 and they had to do a levy from the residents to do it. So you, your taxes, there's a levy for a water, water levy on your taxes. That's how they paid for it. 1962 and for western south dakota that ain't a bad thing because look what the look what water would do for economic development for all citizens farmers ranchers um business people just people in general i mean water is a huge resource that we need if you looked at those numbers their their population was ninety six thousand, but they're so spread out the town of saint george you don't see that you know like here but uh you know, the the work that they've done with the water, they had to, being in a desert. And the sediment from the hill, those mountains, you know, I can't remember how many millions of tons of sediment comes. That's why when they diverted the dam, and they made nice areas. So that was probably the highlight of, of the meeting is understanding the water part of it and seeing that, uh, you know, so often we sit back and think we're so unique. It's the Air Force Base that's creating all these people. It's this, it's, and we're unique or just growing. It's not. And St. George is right up there with us too. And that's Utah. So that was, there was another, uh, during the general session, uh, John Molden, Chief Patrol Agent for Tucson Sector for Border Patrol, gave us an enlightening uh, enlightened us of what's actually happening on the border. The humanitarian part, a lot of us think it's people sneaking across the borders and this and that and, that, and they're shipping them back. But a lot of times they, they showed us, they showed us the pictures of the bodies that they find uh, that people have died and they found or people near death that they, they try to help out because of all of this. So you know, a lot of times with the politics and the national news, we only hear one thing. There isn't a lot more to this than was. Well, so that was a great presentation as far as that went too. But, and then we did our elections of officers. I, I didn't, I forgot the guy's name. We did the new uh, second vice president. He's new out of California. And I was there with Randy Dybert and uh, Chris Jacobson, our, our South Dakota. Hard. So uh, it was a good conference. I think these NACO conferences are good for people to go to, uh, not just the networking, but also if you can get on some of these mobile tours and workshops, they're very enlightening and uh, find out what other people are doing. But uh, uh, the water part was really interesting. Nice. Uh, the WIR stuff, you know, we when we're choosing our new second vice president and so forth, um, you know, we talk a lot about the pilt that uh, we do. You know, we I handed the these out. Um, but that's kind of a given of what D WIR does. Um, we talked about we need to do other, look at other things that we need to focus on. We need to focus on the jails, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember some of the other things that the candidates want. 911, emergency response, fire, you know, volunteer fire departments, all that. Ambulance. We got to start focusing in on some of that, not just concentrating on the pills. We got to be able to get some of that and work on those. And, you know, we'll have, we have our new fall conference and, and well, the next one's in Austin. So, uh, There'll be some stuff to learn there too that would probably move that forward. Well, the WIR has a, a meeting during those conferences too, and they elect officers at that point in time too, well, for our caucus. But uh, that'd be a good one to go to to bring up some of that stuff too. But it, they want to start working on uh, ambulances, fire departments, that type of thing we need to start focusing on. For PILT? 
Well, no, for WIR in whole, yeah. Western Eastern region, that's 15 states. You know, that those are things that we need, we need to broaden our horizons and, and work on some other things. And I spent some time with two different uh, workers from WIR and they do the lobbying in, in uh, Washington. And so I asked them, I said, how did you get started? And they started out as interns in Washington, then went to work with WIR. They learn their stuff and they get, they're like, they're young people, you know, in their 20s. So you know how it is, you know, if you're gonna lobby, you go to that senator or that, or that uh, house representatives, you go to their workers, their interns, and that's how you get the information to where it needs to go. And so it was, they were excited for the job that they're doing and they loved the lobbying part of it. And yeah, they're in their 20s and doing that stuff. So that's sitting down, talking with them was good too. I just told Holly I'd like to go to the one in July. I didn't go to the last one. Um, I also saw some really good, I like the, I've always liked the public safety one and some of the stuff on water and um, they have a lot of, looks like a lot of stuff that I'm interested in. I just, Holly, if they have any mobile, because I do like the mobile workshops and stuff where they go see stuff, if they have anything, I'd like to sign up for some of the mobile stuff on different things that they have, because that's most interesting for me and what I remember the most a lot of times on different trips we went when we went to see, remember the Ninth Ward and different places in the city. Those things are very memorable and they keep in your head about, you know, um, things that, you know, when you see it, you listen to it and then you write it and then you tell about it. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. Not that when you're sitting there you don't, but I don't sit as well if, if it doesn't have a lot of variation in it. How about that? So. And it, it's time to have some tough conversations because uh, let me try and find that last one we had. Uh, not leveraging defense. Oh, the preventing uh, preventing and mitigating wildfires in your county. So this that was a pretty hot topic at our convention. Randy couldn't attend because he had something going on, so I attended it. But we had Brian Farabee, Chief Executive of Intergovernmental Relations for the U.S. Forest Service there. And the last two WIR conferences I've been to, a lot of the commissioners wanted to talk to him. You know, Randy did and quite a few others. And he was there, and so he got questioned quite a bit on uh, the forest management. And there's a couple, one, a couple of commissioners from Montana, another one, this is the second time. They asked some tough questions of that Brian. So we kind of went off the subject and, and they asked the tough set questions because he was, he was in the room and I know uh, Randy had a private conversation with him outside in the hallway of what we're working on with our forest management too. So, you know, the, the contacts like that, you just don't get very often either. So, but I do encourage any commissioners, if you haven't been to one yet, please uh, sign up and go to one. It's a learning experience. You can bring back a lot of stuff to your community. And it's going to pay off for ours to have that conference here. So we'll, we'll be able to do that. Um, with that being said, my other one was Community Health Center Board. You know, there wasn't much, there's not much really to report on that, except they're, they're having problems. Uh, st we're, we're still having problems getting uh, a psych nurse uh, on board to work in, in uh, the community health. So they're still struggling with that and with, with some RNs. So they're, that's not nothing new. Um, I wasn't able to get signed on to the NACO WR Public Lands uh, meeting that was Monday. I did attend the Ignite, like Deb said. Um, absolutely, she's right. There's a lot of different programs going on. I think some changes are coming around because I did attend uh, 
the Karen Campus Board meeting and the discussion in there also is, you know, this Ignite is, the best way I can explain it for some people that say we got too many programs, too many, much, this, this does not uh, shorten your sentence. You do this stuff, it does, this is if you want, it, you as a inmate or whatever, if you hit bottom and you want to try better yourself because you got, you know you got nine months in there, here's a path that you can do, use your time wisely. It's not going to get you out earlier. It's not going to decrease your sentence. You know, this is before sentencing and so forth. So it's a choice. Um, I think it will work. And the reason why, I, you know, I was skeptical as, as probably Deb I was when we first heard, because it kind of came upon us pretty quick. Um, when I looked around the room, the people that were at the Ignite uh, conference and the after conversations, I talked to at least two people that had, had gone through, and I told the care campuses, I know at least three or four people that have gone through this program, successful businessmen who are doing good in our community that have, have come through this and worked through this. So a program that's gonna offer somebody the choice to use their time wisely at a point in time that they probably finally feel that they hit rock bottom, and but then can achieve some stuff while they're in there. Uh, I think, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, Chris from Michigan. Was it Michigan? Do you remember? Was you, he was the second one that spoke. Do you remember that, Deb? He, he's the one that was pretty excited and energetic about it because, it, you know, you're not going to see results from something like this right away. He was the taller guy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is something that you, yes, they're going to track it. They're going to follow it. Because the only way you're going to know if it works is by you know, tracking the information. So, but that, that's what got me on board was that it's it's not something that's getting them out early. Because uh, you know, quite frankly, there's some uh, by the time they, a person hits the jail, they've already uh, done counseling. They've been there, this and that, and and uh, the jail is the time of reckoning. And I think it's a, a place that sometimes that's where you need to be. So the main issue, just just from what I've seen, Lloyd, is it's not the jail time, um, and and I think that program can work. Um, it's not just the care campus; is you have to have follow through. If you do not track, the outcomes are from people, human beings, not from data yeah. and charts. And I'm finding that when you have charts and you have all kinds of stuff, um, I'd like to see the human beings' names, and you don't have to even, I don't know if you can say names, but because you can't have that, but just as a commissioner, we can. Because a lot of times, um, it doesn't make it believable with, I don't care what people say with their datas and their, their drawings and all their stuff, if the outcomes aren't shown in a way that you can see those outcomes. Um, and here's here's your second part of that. You can have a program, and I'm, I'm seeing programs all the time. We have them at our place. It's the follow through with the programs. I don't care if it's probation. I don't care because they need, um, you know, workers, enough workers to be able to, you got hundreds of people. Then with Care Campus, they have people, but they're getting a lot more. They're getting overloaded with caseworkers. So if all the programs don't have a certain amount of caseworkers, there's no follow-through in the end. So how do you know that they're working? Because you have one or two um, people that are successful. I'm seeing the major issue with programs is the follow-through. If you go through the worker program, then do you go to the care campus and they find you a place to stay? And and then, you know, because yeah. that's the main, main thing is when they get out, if they don't have a place to stay, once they get out, you can give them all the programming you want in a jail, but they got to have a place to stay in a base to start all these excitement that they have in them. And then that excitement goes away once there's other things that, you know, take over your life. And that's where I see it keep happening over and over again. Other things take over your life because all those steps have to be in place in order for this program, this program to work all the way to the end to make a difference in person's life. You can't just have one program. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. But you know what, Deb, we are set up better than any other community that I can imagine if, after being around. When this, this deal is not meant to be a pill to fix or something to fix people. It's an opportunity for them to get their GED and possibly if they go into Votech, people hire them there. I mean, there was employers there that would say, hey, we'll hire these people and help with that. You're right. That is something that's a handoff, but we have the care campus and we have all that over here, all in this area that where if, if that person wants to help, they can do it. You cannot force anybody to do anything. But here's the problem. With all the programs that it's been, and I thought when we started the uh, collective impact that that's what would make the difference, and they kind of faded off to what it was into something different. Collective impact was getting me excited because it took all the nonprofits and made them work, not made them, but put them together so then you had a network. Now it's about, and, and I'm finding it's about the money in the programs. And um, if they want the money before those people want the money instead of it's a team effort and if this works out everybody gets their money if if it's collectively working not having 10 different programs trying to do the same thing i probably want to know what those are because i well you already know you've seen it if you have the mission you have the hope you have the care campus you have pretty soon do you know and this is fact that we're getting blamed for the care campus being downtown and how we're affecting the downtown when the people, and this is honest God truth, when the people that are affecting a lot of times downtown have nothing to do with our care campus. No, they don't. I could. Do you hear it all the time? Well, here's, here's the deal. And I tell people this all the time, Deb, because since I worked at detox for nine years and what they did, I, I know when it was on La Crosse street, I thought if you go down La Crosse street now, and I do every day. You know, we have our population that's there. It was there when Carica, City County alcohol was on La Crosse, and they're still there. So it's not, it hasn't turned, we know what the reasons are for downtown. Yep. But it's not the care campus yep. at all. And, but the citizens and people don't know that. They just think we're supposed to fix all the people and anybody that's causing those issues. But if you're going to the mission and you're going to the Hope Center, everybody has a place to understand. But when you start too many programs, and then here's the other thing. When you start the programs, did you ever notice they end up with the same people at the care campus, but the care campus, they're telling them they can't do anything? But the care campus is getting blamed for stuff that has nothing to do with them. Um, I don't know how you get that word out. I see it every day just on what I do, what the care campus does. I see, and, and as a citizen, I see the cynicism of the same people that work with the care campus. But people, I, I can't get enough out that to people to say the same people that go to the mission and to the um, Hope Center are, are the ones that are usually the most problematic. The churches that are, and people with big hearts that want to do really good things and feed people and stuff, they're actually, and, and they're actually causing issues for the care campus. They're causing issues in our city because the care campus became a one-stop shop for a reason. Because if you could get people in there that you know needed help from off the streets, they had resources. The other ones don't have the people at the churches at different places to do the the case working and the resources in order to help those people to the next step. So people in our community have big hearts, but I'm finding what they're doing is it, it's causing more issues for the care campus. It, it is, but. We're not going to fix that today. No, it's, it's no, just we're sad not. That I'm just uh, the only thing I can say, the program. and you know this as well as I do, yep. is there's some people that don't want help, and they they're going to use the system as much as possible, and they probably still have some mental health issues, they have some other issues, but you know, we we're not going to fix all for everything. Not everybody that comes in, we're going to be able to help. It's going to be a, a, a small number, but when it does work, it works. But why I'm saying all this, Lloyd, and, and Barry, he's too nice, 
is it gets discouraging for them because I'm not the only one that hears this. And then people come up and say, or they email them or they do stuff. And I don't know how to get the word out. The care campus is not creating the issue downtown. No matter what people think, it's not the issue. It's that's where they have the opportunity to, to better themselves and go to the next step, either to detox or, or pivot point or different places. If you help them, at your places downtown, that's why they're not leaving because it's enabling. It's not wanting them to go to the next step. Uh, maybe that's not the word. It's not enabling with the resources to, to be able to go to the next step to help them. So it's discouraging for their staff and for their people that are working their butts off, I'm going to say the word, and getting blamed for all these other issues. And, and the county is. So that's why I take personal responsibility as well, because I see it every day, what, what they do there at the care campus. Um, it's unfortunate because Rapid City people are not getting um, that they spent their money wisely on the one-stop shop. And it's, and it's working if the rest of the community would get together and uh, be a team and understand the effects they're doing um, to our community. Yeah. Um, just having big hearts, but oh. it's not working. Well, you know, I think we need to get off our soapbox. <laughs> Might be a soapbox, but it's a sad <laughs> soapbox. <laughs> Well, you know what I mean. This is supposed to be a report, but I, I, I think we we could have a conversation on this. That, yeah. Well, I am the care campus representative, <laughs> so I can be on the soapbox for a while because I have to see the effects. But it's my report. <laughs> <laughs> and I added to your report. Anyway, I like the National League of City stuff that yeah. you reported. That's cool. Thank you. Okay, with that, it's the we end of the go in executive session. We've got a motion to go into executive session, and it's going to be SGL 12521 for personnel matters and 12523 for contractual pending litigation matters. Yep. Moved by Hancock, seconded by Roskin. I'll second it. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I share some numbers real quick? Sure. Uh, I don't know if you looked at the last wheel tax report, but. It's awesome. Uh, as of end of May, one million six hundred and twelve rounded, and our budget for the year is one million five twenty five. So uh, that's pretty. Yeah. I'll make a move to come out of executive session. Second. Moved and seconded to come out of executive session. All in favor, in scrutiny, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Seconded by Ross Connect. Second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned.